this is it, Ella. End of an era. All it needed was tax and insurance. And wheels. Wheels would have been nice. <laughs> we had a dream, Ella. And now it's been crushed. I feel really sad. Don't you? No. I don't feel sad. I feel... Anger is an emotion I understand, believe me. As Minister of Work, I'm angry about the broken Britain left behind by our predecessors. I'm angry about the millions of our citizens being caught up in a degrading poverty trap. Aye, away ye go. Your bum's off, love. Your two-faced midden ye. See that Chingford steel, I tell you. If I could get my horns in him, I would. <laughs> Rab. Aye, I hear you. Chingford steel, blah, blah, blah. Hate, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Look at you. Time was you would be throwing that telly out the window, listen to a big greasy fly man like him. What's happened to you? I gave up my psychosis to spend more time with my family, though God alone knows why. You're all, you're all more do lally than I am. Now, if you don't mind, I'm trying to use the own sweet here. <laughs> Rare times. It's a plastic basin. When we're in the bedroom, it's the old sweet. Ah, well, please yourself. Just remember, I use that basin for washing my dishes. <laughs> oh, I don't know what's the matter with me. She's I used to have a bladder like a circus tent. <laughs> it's really like guzzle paints on the eating. Never once go to the larvae. Oh, you are getting older, Rob. Pretty soon you're going to be 60. I know exactly how old I'm going to be. It's just, well, a lot of men die for prostate cancer, don't they? More die with it than from it, Rab. Prevention. You should go and get yourself checked out now, hey, while we still have a health service. Ah, you're right. Prevention. Where are you going? I'm away, I'm to the own street. <laughs> I think the best thing we can do is just have a good grope around up there and find out exactly what's going on. If you'd just like to remove your trousers and pants, please. Oh, hey. Aye, right. Eh, uh, when you say we... Yes, that's right, unless having a woman examine you makes you feel uncomfortable. No, quite frankly, hen, the, uh, the gender's immaterial, it's she. It's a digit up the sphincter that's bothering me. <laughs> Safe hands. I'll be gentle with you. Eh, how's your Scotch mark, by the way? I've never seen worse. If you'd just like to lie in the bed and pull your knees up to your chest. All right. On the bed. And, uh, <clears throat> oh, I know. Rather hard than you, eh? <laughs> Sticking a finger up my flu. Right. There could be pie suppers lodged up there for the summer of love. Right. This won't hurt. <laughs> During his whistle-stop tour, Mr Steele is visiting some of the poorest areas of Glasgow. This is Govan on the Clyde side. Annie, how old are you? I'm 32. This is my boy Snoop Dogg. He's six. Ma, can I get Annie? See you a minute. See you. Wins. Hello. Jesus Christ. Chingford Steel, Minister for Work. Did you say work? You are? Uh, you'll have to excuse my china. He's having a wee coma. He's awfully fond of the crack. <laughs> Christ. What a dream. I dreamt I woke up and the angel of death was hovering over me, offering me a job. You know, I came here years ago when I was in opposition. Back then, I felt your pain. Now that I'm in power, I'd like you to feel mine. How does that sound? You say... Uh, yes, yes, I'm phoning about the advert in the... Aha, uh -huh. 60 hours a week for half the minimum wage. Oh, oh no, that seems very fair. <laughs> oh, well. Well, 
If the other 40 people in front of me change their minds, then you know where I am. Thank you very much for your very probing and stringent question. Let me reassure you, the economy is safe with us. You see, any redundancies in the public sector will quickly be mopped up by the private sector. I was the private sector. And I'm in a fucking doll. <laughs> Look at this, stare at me. I've been man raped. I've got an arse on me like a screaming skull. Oh, Mary. Oh, hi, Rob. How'd you get on? Listen, I'll just come right out and see it. I have a soft prostate. I see. Help me out here. Is that good news or bad? Good. If she'd tell me I'd won Stunner of the Year competition at the Scottish Hardon exhibition, I, I couldn't be more delighted. Oh, Rob, hold on. There's somebody at the door. I need to go. All right, I'll see you in a wee minute. And I'll bend her a kitchen table and you can have a look for yourself. <laughs> I look forward to that. All right, cheer up. I know this must look like a rather shabby photo opportunity, which of course it is, but at my age one does tend to suffer from politician's bladder. <laughs> yes? Hello. I'm the Minister for Work. I was wondering if I might use your bathroom, please. Be my guest. Thank you so much. It's uh, actually feeling like that gaping way, you know. Like if somebody yodelled up it, there'd be a bit of an echo. <laughs> so, why MD would want to yodel up my jacksie? <laughs> Excuse me, mate. Uh, do you know who lives in there? In there? Oh, no, I couldn't tell you. No, no idea, no idea. <laughs> How do they owe you money? <laughs> oh. Well, it's me. <laughs> what the hell do you want? Well, the Minister for Work got in there 20 minutes ago. Could you let us know what's going on? The Minister for Work? What's his name again? Oh, Chingford Steel. Chingford, Chingford Steel? Oh, in the name! Why can't you get a play it away? God almighty! Rob, I'd like you to meet the Secretary of State for Work. Oh, what the hell have you done to him? I hit him with a frying pan. <laughs> He's a respected member of Parliament. Come here. Did he try and pump you? No, he just came in to use the toilet. All right. Oh, well, so long as you had a good reason. Well done, Constable. That's another dangerous urinating man off the street. Rob! Dear God, woman, I thought I knew you. How many other cabinet ministers have you got stashed under the floorboards? Look, it was just instinct, right? I thought of that wee business that Ella and I lost, and before I knew it, I'd banjoed him. Oh, give me that bloody thing. <sighs> that woman hit me. She bashed me over the head with a blunt instrument. Aye, well, don't worry about it. That's just going to govern for hello, you know. And calling the police. Here, you sit on your archibald. I'm Tefloned up here. Do you know what you're doing? You're threatening a government minister. Is this your wife? Look, Shrek, tell her to let me out of here before there's serious trouble. Tell her? I tell her the iron a shirt for me in 1982 and I'm still bloody waiting. Iron your own shirts. Hell and my nipples will freeze over first. <laughs> Sit on your ass. Don't be stupid. Do you know who I am? Oh, we know exactly who you are. It's you and your type that have cost me my job. You're no helm yourself here, Mary. But listen, we can still talk our way out of this. How? Well, a judge will understand. I mean, if you get a cabinet minister in your living room, it's only human nature to want to bar his brains out with a flying I'm just saying... Concussion must be a way of life to you boys. On the contrary, I've been lucky enough to deal with civilised people up until now. I haven't had to use this once. Do you know what this is? This is a panic button. Uh, listen, oh, what are we going to do? Oh, don't worry. We can still blag our way out of this, using our native wit and cunning. Oh, yes, that'll help. But first, I'll give him another banjo with a flying pan. Shut up! Rob Nesbitt, this is Inspector McLean of Strathclyde Police. 
We have officers deployed around the building. All the man wanted was a fish. Did you know you should have handed him the old sweet and a jake lord for his shoes? Don't shout at me, Rab. I'm at my wit's end. Oh, calm down, calm down. We all right, we all right. Give yourself up. Come out with your hands in your heads. What we do, Rab? Should we just go quietly? Are you kidding? This is a siege here. This is, this is strictly come dancing for scum. <laughs> I am not giving up the limelight until I show them my passadoble. <laughs> Barry's got a gun. Oh, you! Keep that bloody ram again! I'm in a night shift here! I'm getting 40 hours a week and I kidnap to keep you bastards from work! And then I've got my serial killing at the weekend! <laughs> we ain't paying some tax! Uh, psycho alert, sir? I think so. <laughs> you know what, Mary? This is the best I've felt in years! How do you mean? Well, I've got my mojo back! Once a nutter, always a nutter. Oh, Rob! <laughs> Fill me in, Inspector. What have we got? The minister's been held for two hours. Uh-huh. No contact, sir. The kidnapper has a table leg. I see. Is it loaded? <laughs> it's a table leg, sir. <laughs> you can't be too careful. These things can be bored out and reactivated as lethal career-threatening weapons. I've got a look at it, sir. It's um, early B&Q, possibly late MFI. It's <laughs> unlikely to be a firearm. Why not? Well, it's bow-shaped, sir. She could have got bendy bullets off the internet. <laughs> I can't take chances. This could be a terrorist attack. Summon armed support. Right, sir. if the minister's unharmed. That's more than you'll be once they've got you in the back of a black Mariah. Oh, <laughs> shut it, you! <laughs> the minister is unharmed, apart from mild concussion and a bonny Scotland distel rammed in his gub. A deep distel in gub. Over. What are your demands? Repeat. What are your demands? Mere questions. It's like I'm applying for a crisis loan. You think we're terrorists? Give them some of the jihad part. Oh, infidel. You are a running dog lackey of the Haiti capitalist system. And, by the way, your 34th bus service for government of Castle Milk is ganking. We hear your demands. We will give you... A better bus service between Govan <laughs> and Castle Milk. Oh, no, he's a bomb. <laughs> but we need to humour him. The response unit's on call, sir. We'll have every armed officer on the west coast of Scotland here in no time. Are they bringing the new tasers? Ah, oh, that was going to be a surprise. <laughs> Where is the minister? Is he tied to a radiator? Repeat. Is he tied to a radiator? The of the minister's tied to a radiator. We can We're in white meter. Who can afford to run their central heating in the middle of the afternoon? Well, tell them that we're new to the terrorist business. We're working our way up to radiators. For now, he's cuffed to one of my Bentwoods. Ah, oh, bugger it. I'm playing the radiator card. We might get new central heating out of us. <laughs> oh, you! See me. See my wife. We're fanatical, by the way. And we want to tie the minister to a radiator. But we're, we're fanatical central heating is Donald Duck. <laughs> so we want a new boiler. And make sure that's fanatical day. Oh, what the hell? Ask for a heated towel rail as well. <laughs> oh, aye, and a fanatical heated towel rail. Gas and electric, man. Gas. I like to let my fags off the pilot. <laughs> <clears throat> Gas, by the way. And don't forget the one-year fanatical home care plan and all. <laughs> How goes it, sir? Scum bastard. He's asking us to install a new central heating system so he can tie the minister to a radiator. <laughs> well, this could be our chance. 
Mm. If we could get a, an armed officer disguised as a plumber gas fitter into that flat, then it could be a health and safety issue. We'd need a hitman who was corgi registered. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing else for it. We'll just have to string them along. Anything else? Repeat, anything fanatical else? Can I ask you what else we want? A job. How about the overthrow of the hated capitalist system? Oh, that can wait. I want to get a new mobile phone for Peach's Christmas first. Oh, my wife wants to overthrow a Western democracy. But first, she wants a wee cleaning job over Christmas. I'll see what I can do. And I want a Lamborghini and a silk shirt with a double cuff, <laughs> just like Jason King at Department X. <laughs> <laughs> what imploding brain cell did that spring from? She's asking for some food. I'm starving. I haven't eaten since breakfast. Oh, that's a good idea. We could send down one of your ears and we might get a free five-minute shopping in Aldi, eh? On second thoughts, I settle for a smoothie. Rob, ask for terrorist food. That'll keep them on their toes. Oh, I <laughs> Well, we're Arabs, by the way. So send us up three fresh suppers. Arabs don't eat fish suppers. Halal fish suppers. <laughs> a bowl of halal and brew. That should keep the deception going nicely. Yes, fiendish in its simplicity. Well, you're dealing with the big boys now, so lots of luck. We're dressing for dinner. Uh, amazing how much better you feel after a good nosh, isn't it? I feel as if I could take on an army. You may very well get your wish. Hear that? Helicopters? Oh, Christ, it'll be cruise missiles up the U-Bahn next. <laughs> No eating your dinner. I thought you said you were hungry. Hungry, not suicidal. I'm sorry. I wouldn't put this in my bin, let alone my mouth. You're hell of a good at starting sentences with I'm sorry before you go and rip the piss of your people. You'll be sorry when you start your sentence. About five years, give or take. That lip is going to get you cleaved again. Oh, I'll put a bloody thing down. You're your tensile daft. I really am sorry. <laughs> I'm just touchy. I'm, I'm cold, I'm scared, and I'm Dying for a pee. Oh, Pap, don't let him up. He'll make a run for it. I have a prostate problem. I need to go a lot. It's my age. How old are you? Sixty next birthday. You? Sixty next birthday. Makes you think, doesn't it? I thought I'd be PM by now. Instead, I've ended up in the Department of Work. How sexy is that? What about you? Rab's religious. It helped him gee up the drink. I've actually been dry for three years and have well, sometimes I've got to admit to myself that without a fight, a lost weekend and a projectile vomit, <laughs> life's hardly worth a candle. All this talk of drinking. May I use your bathroom, please? No, 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 no. You're not leaving this room, boy. You can use your own suite. <laughs> your suite? Oh, it's in the kitchen. I'll just empty the dishes out at first. Are you finished with your cup? I am now. If it won't get me another whack with a frying pan, how come you earn a pair of police handcuffs? Oh, that's a sore point. Rab knocked him out of Orkney Street, Nick, after a drunken disorderly. <laughs> Last time we used them, he handcuffed me to the bed. Oh, I see. No, you don't. Oh, then he dipped my purse and buggered up down the pub. <laughs> she was 48 years in a baby doll nightdress. Her lips turned blue. <laughs> and when I say lips... Rab, <laughs> are you married yourself? Yes, in fact, you cheer and the children will be worried sick. I need to send them a text. No, no, no. You're not sending any text, boy. You'll stitch us up like the last time. I have to. Renee had her first pony lesson today. Please. Oh, why didn't you say? I remember when your two boys had their first pony lesson. Eh, Mary? Aye. They mugged the owner and then galloped off down Saltcoats Beach. This <laughs> is Wayne. Let him send a message. All right, all right, all right. But you'll do it my way. How do you mean? The fanatical way. Yeah. 
You ready to rock, Inspector? Snipers across the street, sir. I've told them to look out for a grizzly bear and a string vest and a head bandage. One clean shot and it'll be like taking the top off an egg. I hope to God this ends quickly. Yep. If this goes wrong, it could end in a bloodbath. Not only that, I'm missing my jealous kitchen. I know. I wish it's still worth a pump. See you playing, Bob. Right. There. You do it just what I tell you, or else. All right? Action! Hello, Rara. See me, see being a cabinet minister. I have been pure minging, so I have. Have, 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 have. But new gen up. Gen, gen, gen up. Gen up. I have pure seen the error of my ways. 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 <laughs> my captors have been pure quality, and I have ta'en up fanatical scumhood, Marcel. Marcel. <laughs> See how I enjoy this tasty macaroon bar and have hundreds of sugars in my tea. Hunters, hunters. Hunters, hunters. Hunters in my tea. This has been a lovely wee kidnapping, so it has... Has. Has. And I have pure lapped it up. I thank my abductors for their traditional Scottish hospitality and mad banter. Uh, we, 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 we got a red eye there. Red eye happens in the eye, Rob. No between the eyes. Hey, hey are you a Hindu? No. Why? <laughs> I'm a fit in the old sweet. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Day two of the Restitution Street siege brings no signs of an ending. The fanatical abductor, the self-styled Rab Adel Bassett Ali Nesbitt El Migran, has me, me, me. All right, then. I haven't slept all night. He's taking stock in my life. Yes, come. What do you want to do a daft thing like that for? No job. No engagement ring. Where is it? It's in the pawn to pay for the electric. Which means that after 35 years of marriage, I now own less than I did on the day that we were hitched. I'm working backwards. But with Ruby wedding, I fully expect to be homeless, staggering down Hope Street, smelling at ozone with a trail of cats behind me. I will never allow that to happen. You will be in a supermarket trolley. <laughs> Text message from Renee. That phone video uploaded has had 6,000 hits on YouTube. For the first time in my life, I'm cool. Bugger me. Wicked! Why oh, can't he take this, Rob? This is doing my eating. Oh, come on, Mary. Keep your ditties up. Keep your ditties up. I'll go and make you a nice wee cup of tea, eh? Anyway, it's gone quiet out here. Maybe they've given up. Soldier in the windowsill. Just face it, Rab, we are gubbed. Never, never, I will never give in. I, I've got weapons of mass destruction in that bedroom. I've got I've got tall boys, I've got pine cabinets, a full arsenal of toxic furniture. Great almighty. Rab, it's me. 
Jason King from Department S. <laughs> Jen up, so it is. The authorities have asked me to help. Give yourself up before it's too late. If you do, this can be yours. Oh. It's, it's not the armored car that bothers me. I mean, you know, drug dealers have been driving about here for years, but, well, when Jason King says jump, you say, how high? Oh. Yes? Yeah, there was. I'm ready to cut a deal. You sure? Oh, I've been waiting for this. I have my tweet ready to go. OMG, hey, mate, news to die for. Grizzly Adams wants a face-to-face. -face. Laugh my ass off. Triple grin smiley. LOL. How does that sound? Oh, I, that, was, that, was, uh, that was magnificent. I, I, I. Positively Chuck Chilean, isn't he? The life, eh, Mary? La dolcis vita. Chapped hands, chill brains, business as usual. How did you manage to swing it? I have friends in very low places, Ella. There are dark forces at work in this country that we may never understand. Hello? Rab, I thought they'd taken away your shoelaces and your phone. No, I know yet. There's been another wee incident. Now what's happened? Sir, I was leading them into court when they grabbed my cuffs and my phone, secured themselves to the rail. Come ahead, come ahead. Square go, your bums. <laughs> well, what are you waiting for? You've been dying to use your new tethers, haven't you? Oh, can I, sir? Can I? Go for that. Ha oh, ha I did science at school, boy. You use that taser and you'll regret it. Oh, no half as much as you will. <laughs> the monkey, my dear. <laughs> Tell me why I didn't pass an old level like that. <laughs> <laughs> We'll catch up with Rab again at the same time next Wednesday. At 10 tomorrow, keep it topical with new Mock the Week. in the warm, comforting arms of the good old British recession. You know, I stood here 30 years ago in the dole queue and Norman Tibbet tell me to get on my bike. Now, well, they give me a classroom chair. That's what three decades of the slump boom economy has done for me. I now get lectured sitting down instead of standing up. <laughs> now, you all know why you're here. We want to help you back into work. And how the hell are you going to do that? I mean, we're a bunch of unspeakable white trash at the arse of 50. Who the hell is going to want to employ us? I mean, there's no enough jobs for normal people, let alone us. Nonsense. I'm a blind black Muslim woman in a wheelchair and I found a job. Exactly. But we don't have your advantages. <laughs> what cultural boxes do we tick? Then create work. Be your own boss. 
Make it happen. Mr. Nesbitt, are you giving me the fingers? How did you know that? I felt the air waft. <laughs> That's impressive. Sometimes it's hard to be a woman Giving all your love to just one man He'll have good times, you'll have bad times Zip it, Mary. We're here. Oh, right. Oh. Oh. Are you all right, Ella? How are you feeling? Oh, red raw. Normally for an arse this sore, I'd expect a good hotel with breakfast. Oh, well, look on the bright side. At least we've still got our jobs. Mrs Nesbitt? Oh, oh, sorry we're late. We've just had a few teething problems with our new eco-friendly transport fleet. Aye, it's got one saddle and two arses. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, it won't happen again. I'm sorry, Mrs Nesbitt. There won't be an again. I'm having to let you go. What? But, but you, you said you liked us. You said we were the cheapest cleaners in Govan since his lot he went up. Aye. Are you racist? Is it because we're Scottish? It's nothing personal, but I'm having to cut costs. I'll miss your singing around the house. You're very good, you know. So what you're saying is you want us half invalidity benefit and back into work? In a nutshell. But there isn't any work. Exactly. I mean, so somebody's going to be unemployed, so it might as well be them that likes it. I'm afraid unemployment is no longer an option. Welfare benefits are costing the country a quarter of its annual expenditure. Oh, is that a fact? Look here. Here is my investment portfolio. A 20 pence piece, a used scratch card... And a slightly soiled Johnny that my mate asked me to keep for him while his wife was washing his denims. Thanks for that, Al. <laughs> so I'd just like to know, where is the benefit? Oh, this benefit I'm supposed to be getting. I spend my money on booze, on fags and lottery tickets. So what happens to that? The money goes right back into circulation. Hey, I donate that much money to the coalition. My gyro should be paid to me offshore. Mr Nesbitt, if you don't look for work, I'm going to recommend suspension of your benefit. Are you giving me the finger again? No, I'm sticking my thumb up my ass. I'm practising for being shafted. <laughs> Look, Mary. What? What do you think? The clients are always telling us what good singers we are. Aye, when we're cleaning, everybody's a good singer when their heads in a lavy bowl. And Armitage Shanks has got an echo like St Paul's Cathedral. Come on, come, come on, on, Mary. What have we got to lose? Hi. My boys are right. Come on. <laughs> right. You then get to me, old crap, the bike. That's it. Can't you grip yourself? You're telling me you're going to be in a girl band. Oh, aye, that's right. We're the pussycat dolls with a menopause. <laughs> now, you're going to rip the piss all night or what? Don't start that prima donna nonsense with me. You haven't even got your first booking yet. Gigs, Rab. We call them gigs. Oh, we do, do we? That'll be... That'll be the wee in show business lately. There's your tea. Unless, of course, you'd prefer a big bowl of Smarties with all the blue ones taking it just the way we like it in the business of show. Oh, gonna cut that out, will ye? I could do with your support at a time like this. What about me? What about me, eh? I was doing a doll of us today and they read me the riot act. Have you any idea how badly you've got to bugger up to fail at being unemployed? <laughs> Bob, don't be insecure. If we win this, it'll be money. Oh, well, yeah. you thought your name yet? What are you going to call yourself? I've not really thought about that. Have you any ideas? Well, there's all these niche bands nowadays, aren't there? You know, the priests, the soldiers, the fishermen. You see where I'm going with this, don't you? So? I know exactly what you should call yourselves. Thank you, Marshall Gormley and his musical replacement, Hep! <laughs> OK, 
Okay, cleaning up in the house tonight. Would you please welcome the two, the only, the Scrubber! What do you mean, a low govern? He's only living in the corner. Prick a little rab. This could kick off big time. <laughs> hey, James, is steady. We are showbiz wives. Show we bit of diplomacy. Yes, indeed. We are the Scrubbers. I am uh, Mr. Muscle. Ben Durn, I'll prove it. <laughs> Show diplomacy. You got all handy. Right here. They insult their wives again. They're claimed. Right. Never close your eyes. Anymore when you kiss your lips, and there's no tenderness like before in your fingertips. Actually, they're not that bad. Not too bad at all. I'd pump that redhead. <laughs> yes, one knocking to me. <laughs> what do you mean, one knocking you? What did we just say? He's insulting your bloody wife. No, he's not. He's insulting your wife. He doesn't want to pump your wife. He wants to pump my wife. One now. That's just a disgusting sexist attitude. <laughs> oh, Paul. What about a blonde? You don't want to pump her? No, she's fake. Look at her top lip. I wouldn't have a bird that had a heavier growth than I've got. She's not got a heavy growth. She's just had a bikini wax. How do you know that? I'm a man. What do you mean, my God? Sick bastard or what? This guy's trying to pimp his wife. <laughs> I'm not trying to pimp my wife. She's up for grabs. I'll have her if you don't want her. She's not up for grabs, you cheeky bastard. <laughs> You're bad, you're bad. Aye, 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 I'm good. So what are you saying? You wouldn't pump my wife. Aye. Defo. Ah, why are you scary again? <laughs> <laughs> you got your apology for cushy boys. Your problem. You know, it's never too late to do something with yourselves. Look at your wives. Or is the role reversal you like? They wear the trousers, you wear the knickers. Is that the deal? No, well, it is for me. <laughs> I tried the Amazon last night. It was delicious. Oh, you only pumped Ella in years. I see a lure of showbiz rap. <clears throat> Success has made Ella regain her pomposity. <laughs> Which is how I got my idea. All right. And what idea is that? The scrubber sell sex appeal. We'll sell sex appeal. Such a job I'm needing. They're going to stop my benefit. Hear me out, Rab. Hear me out. Right? You're a house husband. I'm a house husband. I give you three words. Hunks for hire. <laughs> Hunks. Stunning as you are, could I invite you to go and take a run and Donald Duck to yourself for just one moment? <laughs> it's all a go in L.A. rap. Boat housewife picks up the phone. Oh, tee hee, Mr. Hunk. It's Monday and I need a dirty big washing done. Hunk brings you into her house. Next thing he knows, he's not washing the sheets. He's changing them. You with me? And how many registered blind housewives do you think there are in Glasgow? Right, <laughs> look at it! He's in the stairs! We might not be in the first flush, but we can always give nature a helping hand. Sends his apologies, he's busy collecting trolleys up as the other day. <laughs> as you can see, I'm uh, I'm ripped. I've been on the steroids. Aye, my mummy's on them too since her period stopped. 
Did you get the hot flashes too? No, no, no. You don't, you don't get birthed like this in HRT patches. <laughs> now, uh, what will it be? Some uh, dirty dusting, some uh, peekaboo polishing, or I can flex my pecs or wiggle my booty. A choice of yours, foxy lady. Can you scrape shite off the living room carpet? I didn't have a toilet when I wasn't looking. No, I think you've got the right end of the stick here. I mean, we're no real cleaners. <laughs> we're fantasy figures. We're, we're here to inject a bit of glamour into dull lives. Already got something for that room here. It's God's Mac. I see. That's how you get into this mess. Look, I'm worried sick. If I don't clean my act up, the social services says they'll take my wings away. Look at the state of the place. It's not going to be in grand designs any time soon, is it? Aye. Well, what about you? You're the same age as my granda. Yet here you are cutting about govern and a pair of gold lamy trunks, shaking your sad grey ass for pin money. You're exactly living the dream yourself, are you? Listen, I'm an unemployed alky, but see, when I pull on these trunks, I become Cristiano Hunk for Hire. <laughs> Then when I take them off, I become rab, drunk for hire. <laughs> all right, all right. You're on. Where's the shite you need cleaned up? Don't get annoyed. But you're standing in it. <laughs> Is that okay? Oh, it's fine from where I am sitting. Brad. Oh, you're a lovely, great big hunk of a man. Oh, well, glad you're satisfied. I wouldn't go that far. You've only just polished my statuette. But at our age, we have to be thankful for small mercies. Isn't that right, fellows? Mm. <laughs> well, um, it's been great meeting you all. And maybe we can do it again sometime, eh? Aren't you forgetting something? What's that? My pool. It's clammy. <laughs> We'd like to see you rub a wad of duraglit up and down that. Would you? We would, Brad. You're gorgeous. <laughs> oh, thanks very much. Thank you. It's, uh... Well, I've always tried to look after myself, you know. Oh, oh we can see that. <laughs> Um, there's a slight overhang over your wee spangled panties, but it's kind of cute. <laughs> well, uh, helps keep the goods out of the sun, you know what I'm saying? Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I got my song bag on, too. Aye, it just needs you to sing quieter and to stand further back from the mic. Then it'll be absolute quality. Well, I'm practically whispering as it is, Ella. Less is more, Mary. So much less is much more, eh? Hey? Stands to reason. <laughs> Aye, uh, maybe you're right. Here we go, ladies. Compliments of gentlemen at the bar. All right, girls. <laughs> How's about a wee song to get the party started? Oh, no, the no. No, no. We're waiting on our men. They've just nipped outside for a fag. Aye, and you don't want to hear us singing. No yet. Ah, go on. No, no. We're saving our voices for the second tea. Please, just one. No, no. No, no. <laughs> OK, suit yourselves. All oh, right, if it'll keep these quiet. <laughs> <laughs> Rabbit, I wanted to tell you something. I'm gay. <laughs> you look shocked. Well, I must say, for somebody that's humped a thousand women, some of them no even conscious, you've managed to hide your gain as well. I suppose I was just desperately confused. You know, I must have been groping for my inner nature. You got a light, love? How you can <laughs> cut that out right away. Don't come on, no coward me, just because you've developed a taste for the salty stick. Grab <laughs> that big lug. This is nothing to do with sex. 
It's to do with being valued as a human being. Oh, it's just that, well, when I'm with Ramsey and Jackie... Oh. <laughs> Ramsey and Jackie, oh, aye. That'll be that lot of quaffered screamers you're cleaning for, likely. Nature's palette has many shades, Rab. Don't be so reductive. Reductive, right? That's no you, Tom. That's them. I get this. I get this. When you're with them, I lie you up. Yeah. I bet they flip with you, you know. <laughs> and probably offer you biscuits. Coconut mallows from Waitrose. <laughs> but more than that, though. More than that. They make you feel wanted. They do. And feeling wanted is a good feeling. Am I right? All right. I'm eye candy for a bunch of geriatrics and I like it. They lost after my body, Rab. <clears throat> when I'm pole dancing for them, they slip where there's originals doing my song. <laughs> anyway, there, I mean, I've said it. What about you? What about your day? Well, I scrape shite out of a living room carpet. <laughs> you know what? I felt needed to. You're sicker than hell. <laughs> quite possibly, quite possibly. Eh? Come on, let's rejoin the ladies. Well, hello, walking! We're going to sing all night long! You know, but uh, I think I'll get a mess. I've got an early start tomorrow. I mean, you know. Gently! I must say, feeling want is a good feeling, no one. Aye. But no way then, though. Moin. Hey, you can cut that in now. <laughs> oh, good morrow. <laughs> you can always tell there's a recession on, can you, when the poor start getting naked? <laughs> Stripping steel workers, pole dancers, third world hookers, every... Every dole cue, a porn mag chorus line. <laughs> of course, David Cameron says we've all got to share the pain. But I don't see him spreading his butt cheeks in the meat rack doing Piccadilly, do you? <laughs> you know, people, people think, people think that scum hate work. We don't, you know, we don't. It's jobs we hate. I mean, give me something I like doing and I'm, well, happy as a pig and shit. <laughs> Which is serendipitous, because I happen to be a pig, and I'm presently engaged in scraping shite after was a Carly's council flat. <laughs> and do you know what? I can't wait to get there. <laughs> oh! 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 What? <laughs> and what time did you get in last night? Ah, oh, don't play the indignation card with me. Standing there like John Knox in a sparkly tanga. I can hear your prostate gasping for here. <laughs> oh, is that it? Is that, is that your best shot? Well, I still appear to be homo erectus, so if you'll excuse me, I'll await my work as a sex object. Oh, Rab, wait, wait, don't, don't go. I need to talk to you about my career. Your career? What about it? Well, after the gig last night, right, Ella and I, we were talking and, well, then we started arguing and, well, Rab, we've got artistic differences. Artistic differences? Oh, no! <gasps> oh, around here, that's worse than cancer. I'm serious, <laughs> Rob. Aye, and show them, huh? I spent yesterday afternoon trying to prize a kid's trainer out of you, Ben, with a fish slice. <laughs> artistic differences, is it? Get over yourself. Rob, look, don't go. Look, I'm just fear I'm going to do something stupid. I wouldn't get yourself a job. Did I actually say that? <laughs> Hello? You decent? You're in your bed, I'll come back. No, you're all right. Come in. Oh, you're here. Oh, you're, you're cleaning. I worried sick. I didn't think you were coming back. This is Judgment Day. The social welfare woman's coming round. I said I'd be here for you, did I know? I know you did. But let's face it, Alkies are unreliable. Unreliable? Mm -hmm. 
And of course you can set your watch by a junkie, can't you? Except if they saw your watch, it'd be off your wrist, straight down the pond and traded in for a bag of smack. That's what you right. But neither of us in a position to get on high horse, are we? Aye, you'd better believe it. Now, if you'll excuse me, it's time I hit the vim. And you, you stick out, I'll up your ass for a couple of hours, cos I've got work to do. We've got work to do. This is one of me when I was with Third Lanark Reserve shortly before the tragic shoulder injury which ruined my career. Mm, games all changed since then, of course, and for the worse, in my opinion, you see, players in my time, well, they didn't dive. I mean, you know, they had a deep sense of, uh, well, fair play and... Brad, what? No offence, but stop talking about the past. It's awfully depressing. Maybe you could lose that dark, satanic mill you've been puffing on for the past hour. <coughs> a pipe. But I got it for you, sir. I, I thought it might help me fit in, you know. Poor Brad. You have a very quaint idea of the senior citizen life, don't you? I don't get it. I mean, I thought you fancied me. I thought you liked me. That's why I came round early. Sorry, Brad. Orlando! <laughs> Hot the day, isn't it? Oh. You've got my car. Aye, and if we ever want J.B. Priestley round to do the iron, we'll get in touch. Bitch! <laughs> 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 improvements here are very encouraging. I can see you've made a real effort to create a clean and healthy environment for your children. I think congratulations are in order for you and your... Hunk. That's been great. Let's help me through this. Uh, just in case you're wondering, uh, this is actually platonic. Uh, I mean, I know it looks a wee bit dodgy, but well, I'm actually a time self gigolo. <laughs> this is just my workplace, no? <laughs> <laughs> Once again, congratulations. Hey, just a wee minute, hen. I just like to say thanks very much. This means a lot to her, you know. Mm. She'll know like you do. Well, you, I hope. Let's just keep our fingers crossed, shall we? Aye. Cheerio. All the best. Yes! There you are, you see. What did I tell you? <laughs> All that hard work paid off. No, no, no. Hey, <laughs> oh, who are you phoning now? My main man. You bring a few jellies in. I'll invite a few mates up to celebrate. Oh, come on, hen. There's other ways to celebrate. I might have wanes, Rab, but I'm entitled to life. That's right. But him and his brother are entitled to life and all. Listen, I can fold away my belly and pack up my sad grey pimply arse and get my salute here. But they can't. You make that call, and I'll make a call and all to social bloody services. OK. OK. Now you're right. Hey, I ain't got a cloth. Cos I made that speech standing in a fresh toilet. What? <laughs> I'm only kidding. I'm only kidding. Hey, let me see your dragon. Ladies and gentlemen, we'd now like to sing for you The Greatest by Mr. Kenny Rogers. <laughs> Little boy in a baseball hat Standing in the field with his ball in his back With his ball in his back, with his ball in his back <laughs> Stop milking it. This is supposed to be a simple wee ballad. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought I was in a band called The Scrubbers, you know, plural. I didn't realise it was one great big bloated mega scrubber. Oh, I see. It's all coming out new, isn't it? All oh, the jealousy and all the spite. I used to like that song. 
Till you wrap the big welder's tonsils around you. Oh, really? Well, I can't help it if I'm a better singer than you. Ha! Better singer? How was that wee boy? I'd forget about his ball and wrap that bat in your larynx. But you mean like this? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Good one, Jimmy. He's still taking the old pink pound. Yeah. It's all over. They traded me in for a younger model. No, oh, the fickle swines. They threw me out like a first wife. It's dented my self-esteem, Mum. I'm having to question my attractiveness. Ah, away. No, no matter your attractiveness, you're still a fine figure of a sleaze bag. <laughs> Thanks, Ralph. That, that means a lot. Yeah, they bother. Jimmy. What? You want me to lay you up one last time? Would you? Hey. Hey, boy, I tell you, here you go, pal. Oh, 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 The way I see it, it is my civic duty to live fast, die skint, and leave a dirty big fat bustle of a corpse. Forever onward. For more comedy, you can go online now for a sneak peek of brand new observational series, Life's Too Short, written by Ricky Gervais and Stephen Merchant, with plenty of unexpected guest stars coming soon to BBC Two. quality. <laughs> What's funny? Oh, a story in here about a Glasgow woman. Listen. In a fit of revenge, she cut off her husband Sandy Mellish's private part and chucked it in a skip. <laughs> Lush. You go, girlfriend, go. That's funny. Of course it is. It's extreme, but hey. <sighs> I've got your logic. Extreme. <laughs> Oh, here's another one. You'll love this. Oh, what is it? A woman with a 42-inch chest lost one of her nipples in an accident at work with a bacon slicer. <laughs> oh, that's in very poor taste, that. Well, I'm to extreme, but hey, I mean, what is the difference here? There's a world of difference. The wife was provoked by her husband's behaviour. The other was an unfortunate accident. I see. So what you're actually saying is in the great... Gender card game of life. A pair of tits beats a single cock high. I don't like the tone of this conversation. That's your trouble, lady, isn't it? Penis envy. Oh, is that a fact? Well, I certainly don't envy yours. I've seen hanging moles that are made impressive in that thing. <laughs> no, is that the time? And he started getting ready for Peach's birthday party. Since when did it become your job to throw the Wayne's birthday party? Since her mother went up the remedial wing to visit Gash, it perks her up to see the man that chucked her more clinically depressed than she is. That's just par for the course nowadays, isn't it? Why is everything men's fault? Hello? <laughs> Jimsy? I've <laughs> <laughs> done a terrible thing. That's my own fault. What do you mean? What's happened? Just say it. I humped a midget. Oh, is that right? You humped a knot in a tree once. Didn't they ring me about that? I know, but I'm afraid there's been a development. <sighs> right, I'll be right there.
Oh, oh honey draws. What is it, Crispy Wise? <laughs> Would you mind if I were to pop out for a moment? Not at all. You do whatever the hell you want, but you make sure you are back in time for Peachy's birthday party, right? Aye, aye. <laughs> Are you sure you want this, kid? I'm sure. I tried to buy her half rap. I said, look, here's £4.50 up front, and there's a fiver waiting on a scratch card for you after the termination. It's not a question of money. I've told you before. Listen, I am not wishing to be indelicate here, but are you sure it's his? I've had a scan done. The Wayne's got two horns and a tail and was reading a copy of Asian Babes. It's his, all right. I wasn't going to say anything. I was going to bring the kid up myself, and then I thought, I don't want my child hating me because he doesn't know who his father is. Eh, uh, when you say he... Like I said, I've had a scan done. We've even picked a name. Henry. Henry? <laughs> Him for a feather, Henry for a name. He sure he needs his red hair and he'll have the full bob eye hat trick. <laughs> oh, my God, you hear that. I mean, I'm not ready for the responsibilities of fatherhood. I'm still sowing my wild oats. I'm 62. What? It's a compliment. I, ch I cherished you enough to like you. There is, of course, uh, one other consideration. I know he's married. That's why we're here. That's why we phoned you, Rab. I don't know what you do about Ella. You two talk it over. You will support me, won't you, Jamesy? How can you even ask that? This is our child. Hmm? <laughs> hey, hit me. Who do you know that'll put in a wheelie bin for a tenner? You can't do that, for God's sake. This is your son. You don't understand, Rab. No having wings was Ella's greatest tragedy. I know that, James, I know that. I mean, news like this could be a devastating blow. There's no telling how she'll react. Oh, you're bloody right. You'll... You'll have to be delicate here. You'll have to... You'll have to break it there gently. Oh. Oh. Well, I'll just say... Ella. Hmm? Yeah, no offence. <laughs> but I'm the egg man, so get it right up you. <laughs> I'd let me skip the fingers if I was you. Hey, well, all the best. Hey, don't go up. I can't do a thing like this cold, can I? I mean, at least stay and have a drink with me first. I can't, James. I'm due at Peach's birthday party. Oh, see? Oh. Plenty of time for your grand wing, but none for your godson. Godson? That's right. Godfather? <laughs> I'll maybe just the one. <laughs> you really like dancing, don't you, Nana? Oh, what? I've had plenty of practice, Pet, up the Lindella in the 60s. Other lassies dance in the handbags. I dance with your grand as they lay pissed in the floor. Thanks for coming back, Nana. I'm running out of pish music. I mean, you cut the cake. Oh, don't you worry, Pet. I'll wipe the flavour of that useless sack of shit when I get my hands on him. It's my birthday. Oh, in a happy, joyous way. Oh! Oh, sweetheart! Oh, oh, there she is. Oh, come on. Let's do them shapes. Take it in. Oh, the arm. Party off. <laughs> Go on. It's true, Ella. I have been seeing a vivacious young dwarf. It started out as a one-off, but I quickly grew enchanted by the novelty of having a mini pump lover, and now, alas, she is with child. I see. And hopefully a normal, healthy child, but... Well, even if it turns out to be something that's sitting in a high chair with a full beard and chewing tobacco, that won't bother me. Because a wean's a wean, am I right? You're right, Jamesy. A wean's a wean. Ironic, isn't it? We tried for 30 years to have a wee. What's her name? Sneezy. <laughs> <laughs> He's 
be that up. It, it, it's Irene. And she's not a young dwarf. She's merely a scale model, a human being kind of thing. No. <laughs> Forgive me, but I'm puzzled. What exactly would any young, self-respecting wee lassie see in the likes of you? Tragically. Irene suffers from a terrible illness. She has what doctors call a bike. <laughs> that would explain it. Maybe medical science will come up with a cure one day. But in the meantime, this is my solution. Well, I'm, I'm sorry I was late for your party, sweetheart, but... Well, I took my feet out for a walk, you see, and then I made the mistake of letting them off the leash, and they darted into a pub, so I had to run in after them. I'll tell you, that is the last time I will buy hush puppies. <laughs> thank you, thank you. You promised me faithfully that you would be back in time. Oh, come on, Mary, sweetheart. Angel drawers, no more like that. Come on. I'll, I'll put on a wee bit of the, the Molly Citrus or the Tink Tonks or whatever the hell the winds are listening to new day, and we'll have a wee dance. Oh, fuck eh? it off. I don't want any wee dance. We've got relationship issues, and the only way we are going to resolve them is... Hold on. Ella, look, I can't talk the now. Oh, Really? He cut off James's what? Really? Oh, Rob, would you stop me so selfish? Oh, Ellis, if you... oh, oh, Rob, what have I done? Oh, I was just about to cut the cake. Oh. No, 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 don't, don't, don't scare the wings. Don't scare the wings. Distract them, distract them. Huh? Oh, just... Grandpa, what's that sticking out your chest? Uh, oh, wait, this is just a wee game that your granny and I sometimes play. It's called... <laughs> Breed knife hoopla! Remember, breed knife hoopla, Mary! Oh, oh, I. Ours are fun for all the family. Watch this! <laughs> oh, Rob, my life is over. Oh, stop it for God's sake. Oh, some men get by with it, will he? Ooh, name one! I'll rephrase that. Married men get by with it, will he? Well, I'm married. And I still need it. Oh, garbage. After the first five years, what married couple can be bothered having sex? Well, know each other, obviously. <laughs> That's repulsive. But there's randoms out there. Empty, shabby, demeaning affairs. <laughs> They're what made my life worth living. Oh. Ella was under stress. You got another bird pregnant. Anyway, what about me? What about me, eh? Two inches lower. This could have been my heart, boy. That flesh wound. Another couple of feet lower and it could have been you. All right, all right, I'm getting the picture. Uh, Rob, you know how much I love my thing, mate. I mean, how their kids growing up, well, when I mean, they had their budgies and their goldfish, oh, me, I had cocky. <laughs> I love them. I take a bit, play well, stroke them, does a lot. Oh, stole them, God's sake. You're giving me the bulk. <laughs> I want them back. You go ahead, help me. Oh, yes, Mr. Cotter, Mr. Nesbitt. <laughs> How are you both doing? Well, for, uh, for a man whose wife has just scored double tops in his chest plate, no bad. But my colleague here is feeling an unaccustomed draft in the old crutch vicinity. Yes, yes. Uh, great pity that we couldn't locate the missing uh, part, you know. I mean, if we'd found it in good time and, uh, you know, kept in the right conditions, then, uh, you know, a regraft would have been possible. Sadly. <laughs> This sounds daft, Doctor. But I know cocky's still out there. Somewhere. Call 
blink of it. Maybe trapped, maybe in pain. Oh, catch a grip of yourself. It's your walloper you're talking about, not Skippy the bush kangaroo. Unfortunately, and Mrs Cotter wasn't much help. She's at the police station now, but they say she's, you know, she's traumatised. She has very little recollection of what happened. Doctor, tell me I'll pump again. <laughs> well, with the missing tissue, you know, a, a full recovery would have been possible. Without it? Well... Rab, there's still a chance. Oh, I have got to this. But, well, you have what a man said, dear James. You know, with, with every passing minute... You've got to help me, Rab. Do you remember that film? Bring me the head of Alfredo Garcia. Hey. Well, bring me the wallop of a Jamesy Cotter. <laughs> Well, if Bilbo Baggins can go in search of a ring, I could maybe play on the helmet, eh? I wish I could help you, but my mind's a blank. Oh, think back, eh, When did you last see it? Oh, about 1992. Even then, I had my eyes shut and I was thinking of Chuck Norris. You don't remember anything at all. I mind him telling me that he'd made this lassie pregnant. I was about to make a pan of soup. And I lunged at him. Next thing I know, I'm running down the street with a Tupperware box in my hand. The rest's a total blackout. Take your time, Mrs Cotter. Where did you put it in that Tupperware box? Where were you going to cook it for your tea? I don't know. Do you think I might have been looking for ice? Ice? That'll be it, to preserve it. Now, where would you have gone? The local fishmonger, the butcher? Fresh food in Govan, you kidding? <laughs> no, no, there's only one place. You leave it with me. Oh, Rob. Oh, it's you. Looking for another game of husband darts, eh? <laughs> you want to get around the clock in my rib cage this time? Look, it was an accident. I'm really sorry. Aye, aye. I'll speak to you later. Where are you going? I am away out to look for cock. <laughs> I never thought I'd ever hear myself saying that. Ah, you're right, Rob. Ella came tearing in here earlier. She was in a hell of a state. She had this Tupperware box and she asked me to put it in the ice box for her, so that's what I did. Oh, thank God. Hey, what's the big deal? Did, did she not tell you what was in it? Nope. If only you knew how often he dreamed of you holding that thing in your head. <laughs> well, I'll tell you this. I've had some queer things in my play piece in my time, but never one of these. <laughs> I mean, you have to say, it looks harmless enough, doesn't it? But see if you're a man, it never gives you any peace. A penis, well, it's kind of like a supermodel, insanely insecure and demanding constant attention. I suppose, well, nature made us that way because of the competition for females, no? No, a penis is actually a man's most prized possession, and he jealously guards it with every fibre of his being. Oh, my God! Oh, my God! <laughs> this calls for drastic action. You all right there? You're going to wear that watch out the amount of time you spend looking at it? Oh, nice one. If you excuse me, I've just suffered a tragic loss and I'm hoping it can be repaired. Yes, me too. Sandy Mellish is my name. You probably read about me in the local paper. Oh, you're the guy that had these... Exactly. I heard about your misfortune. Thought I'd pop along to cheer you up. 
What about those nurses, eh? All those buns and not a sausage between us. <laughs> Just our lucky. <laughs> Marvellous, eh? My mate's out there right now. He's trying to hunt mine down. A race against the cock, right? <laughs> yes, I know. That's the sort of joke that pissed off the surgeon. See if he finds it. Do you think they can fix it? Oh, yes. What they've done with me is to stitch mine onto my body to keep the circulation going while they prepare for the operation. Aye, I've heard about that. Where'd they put it on your leg? Unfortunately, no. Like I said, never piss off a surgeon. <laughs> bad bastards. Right, you booky bastards. Who's getting a wally? Come on! Is it you? Is it you? Dear God, you're supposed to be vegetarians, you You dozy big idiots that you are. Bet you've never seen this on the living planet, eh? Big David Attenborough slugging the wildlife with a beer ball. <laughs> Right, Hitchcock. You're claimed. Oh, you did it, lad, you did it. I prayed to big Jehovah for this. I said, Lord, put an end to plague and famine and then take a swatch on the elder part and see if you can find my Hampton wick. Aye, well, just calm down a wee bit, Jim. They've got to make sure it's the right goal yet, you know. Oh, I hope so, Rob. What I hope so. Mr Cotter, good news. We have your missing uh, member. Yes, it was lodged in the, in the, in the gullet of the bird. <laughs> a poor job of a seagull. <laughs> Another first for James E. Corey. Uh, uh, we, we, we'd better get into theatre. Uh, 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 if, if I don't come through this, you tell me Henry about his old money? Oh, I'll tell him, I'll tell him. You, you tell him his daddy was rampant, rampant. You, you tell him he was conceived in a public toilet. Well, I peeked through a, a glory hole at two days having an oven ready chicken. You make him proud of me, Rob? I will, Jimmy. I will, I will, I will. I will. <laughs> all the best. You're all right, you're all right. Aye. Aye. I've had a word with my superior, Mrs Nesbitt, and there's good news. If your husband were to agree that the assault was accidental... Assault? You stabbed me with a breed knife. What would you call it? Ricky Maxi? That the assault was accidental. We could drop any possible criminal charge. Well? All right. I'll do it in one condition. That she gets anger management therapy. Anger management? That's right. Shout at the officer. Let her know how much you don't need that murderous rage of yours calmed down. You bastard. What about your drinking? Oh, would you hear that abuse? I mean, if you had to listen to that every day, would you not take a wee snifter yourself, officer? Does your wife have a history of violence against you, Mr Nisbet? Oh, you don't know the happen. <laughs> then is the time I've had to pamp on the Ray-Bans before I go and do the Saturday shop, because big Serena Williams there has given me a backhander. Is this true, Mrs Nisbet? He's a lion Turag. Oh, you're pure lapping this up, aren't you? See, that's all the badness coming out now. We'll be taking a calculated risk, Mrs Nesbitt. We need to have your word you won't raise your hands to your husband again. All right. I'll go to anger management. Oh, thank God, thank God. I've waited for years to hear these words. <laughs> Bloody delays, eh? What's the matter with you? You've got a merry quirk to make the time go even slower. Funnily enough, I've been thinking about it. If this regrafting doesn't take, I'm going to devote my life to others. I'm going to go to Afghanistan and entertain the troops. <laughs> what do you think? Are you familiar with the term friendly fire? <laughs> what about you? What will you do if yours doesn't take? I've thought about it a lot. I'm going to go the whole hog and become a female hooker. Really? <laughs> I've spent the last 62 years with a dick between my legs. It's too late to stop now. <laughs> ah, Mr Cotter, Mr Nellis, sorry to have kept you. <laughs> it's been a bloody madhouse in that surgery today. Anyway, we're ready for you now. I think. Fingers crossed. <laughs> right. Oh, no. <laughs> Thank you.
one thing about this job, it's really, really boring. You learn how to sleep with your eyes open, but not today. This case, it's a real belter. Mr. Nesbitt, I believe that you and your wife have something to say to the court in conclusion. Yes, Your Honour. I, I am here to vouch for the good character of Ella Cotter. Hey, and I am here to vouch for the bad character of James Cotter. <laughs> Your Honour, I, I have known Ella for more than 40 years. You could never have met a more cheerful, loyal, sunny, bright, trusting person. Then she married Jamesy. Within a year, she'd applied for a gun licence. <laughs> and I have known James Erwin Cotter for 40 years. As his closest friend, I can honestly say that no more odious specimen of humanity has ever left a trail of slime behind it as it crawled along the gutter. When he was born, he took a swallow dive into the U-bend of life and never resurfaced. In the septic tank of his reeking mind, he is the lizard king of defecation. The turds, turd. I'm taking a bullet for you here today. You know that, don't you? I know that, Jamesy. I know that. Together, we plead for clemency. Hi. He is clemency, you sure of fat-ass middle-class <laughs> Let's face it. We're all a bit on the nutty side, and being married makes us even nuttier. Which is why, and you might think me crack for doing this, but I'm going to give Mrs Cotter another chance. Mary? Right. Now let's all go home, pull on our gimp suit, and enjoy life. <laughs> Case dismissed. Oh, I'm not pleased for you. Uh, hello. Hello, Scotland, eh? Fairest legal system in the world. Justice for the Bamport, by the Bamport. <laughs> Who's that? Aye. She's had the wing. <laughs> He's got your eyes, Jamesy. So his eyes. What's his wally like? Did you have a hard time at the birth home? Caesarean section. Now I know how John Hurt felt an alien. No matter, sweetheart. It was worth it. Because that means it'll still be a nice snug fit down there for Daddy. Stop it. She might cut it off. You're forgetting something, Jamesy. You're married. Aye. But in name only. For my marriage is nothing but a hideous mockery. A hollow sham... Based on a deep and abiding love for my wife, which just seems to go stronger. Ella! I, I never saw you there. Irene and Henry, I take it. That's us? Eh. Uh, he's a beautiful baby, isn't he, Ella? Aye. He is. Yeah, Irene, do you think maybe Ella could have a wee hoardy the baby, eh? Erm, um, aye, right. Sure. You wouldn't mind? Of course not. Oh, oh. You go ahead, sweetheart. <laughs> Look, the windy's hiding any sharp objects. <laughs> you know what I'm thinking, don't you, Jamesy? Huh? This should have been me and you. If only, Ella. If only. But we weren't as lucky as Rab and Mary. No, no, right enough. Uh, he wasn't as lucky as us. If we knew that Herman Wange was going to turn out unhappily, would we go ahead and do it just the same? Mind you, how can we answer that? That? What? Look, ah, oh, put that bloody thing away. Johnny Rab. Oh, it's just lovely to have cocky back to his old self again. <laughs> Ella even gave me a BJ last night, out of guilt. She said it was much bigger than she remembered. Almost like it was a different one. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was a different one, eh? <laughs> what do you mean by that? Well, it's just a thought, but 
that were mad busy up that hospital that day, remember? Where have they got you and that other guy mixed up, you know? Stop. Don't go there. Hey, you! <laughs> it has been a mistake. Let me see yours. Cox, <laughs> you can't live with them, can't live without them. Come here! Come here! <laughs> Russell Howard and Milton Jones join the teams to turn the news on its head tomorrow. Mock the week here on BBC Two at ten, and there's more comedy tonight on BBC One. Sarah Millican and Amanda Byram on the panel for Ask Rod Gilbert at ten forty-five. Rita. simple because one young bum is tweeting what he's doing on Twitter and the other is recording my discomfort for YouTube. Oh! What can I change you call this? M- Mr Nesbitt regrets that he was unavoidably detained on alcohol business. Give me a lecture. No lecture. Right. In the past, you'd have read me the right act and then handed me a fork so I could pick my balls up off the flare. In the past, <laughs> we had a future, Rab. No, we don't, because if you keep going the way you're going, you're going to be dead in six months, whereas I will still be vertical. Now, well, wait, are my seams straight? Ah, your seams are straight. Wait a minute. Why are you wearing stockings with seams for? Because it draws attention to the line of the leg. Whose attention? Anybody that wants to look. Employers, satires, white slave traders, retired accountants from Mulgai. In short, the wonderfully wicked world of men. Ah, oh, men. <laughs> men that don't have a label tied to their big toe. Well, I'll say this for you, lady. You're no half coping well with a grieving process. I'm not even dead yet. And you're already out in a sniff. If life is a drama, Rab, I am in my third act. I don't have time to waste on regrets. One out, one in. That's the way it goes. And if you'll excuse me, I have to take a business call. On a Sunday? Well, that'll be the undertaker, likely. You'll be looking for the leg over at the graveside. <laughs> Hello? Mock the ming, ditch the dirt, say sigh in order to shine. You're through to the house mice. Mary Mouse speaking. How can I help you? Mary, it's Ella. I'm at the golf club bar. The seniors' tournament's just ended. It's like they've opened up all the coffins and it's something these are just climbing out. I see. And is you know who they're the new at the said premises? Yeah. I see him. Pringle jumper and dodgy hip. <laughs> know that that narrows it doing any. Well, please tell the said client that I shall be there pronto. If anything arises, I shall call him on my cockberry. I mean, uh, blackberry. <laughs> well, we might have Freudian slip there, as I know. Oh, don't be ridiculous. <laughs> I'm watching you, lady. I'm watching you. Whatever. <laughs> A 
the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ, I baptize you Marvin, Tamazapam, Bullock the Dog, Pure Quality. My boy's been here all night. Ten pound deal, McMenemy. Uh, excuse me, I can't allow drinking in the church. Oh, uh, sorry, Reverend. It's just, well, we're in the rain. Uh, we're just waiting in the drop in centre opening. No. But the drop in centre? <laughs> well, I'm afraid that closed last week. What? Aye. The council cut its funding. You'd have known that, you'd have been too busy lately. Lying, steaming in your own pish. It was somebody else's pish. <laughs> Folks, please. <laughs> if I may make so bold, I'm afraid my colleague has domestic difficulties. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. His good lady is a cleaner who has lately become popular at the golf club, where she is affectionately known as... The 19th hole! <laughs> I know what you're thinking. I'm trying to get you drunk so I can take advantage. <laughs> well, lots of luck. <laughs> For the past 40 years, there's been nothing thereabouts except Rab and a doctor spatula. <laughs> oh, that salty working class humour. I love it. <laughs> But, Mary, you know, I have reached the age when I can afford the good things in life, and I would like that special someone to enjoy them with. Do you mean that? I'm more than just a cleaner to you. We could go out on mixed fours together, as soon as you get some clubs. Well, I'm working on a putter at the very minute. <laughs> when will you have it? As soon as the park keeper at Bella Houston turns his back. Oh, you <laughs> and your earthy, spirited ways. I love it. Oh, here, yeah. steady. You'll have me in my back. Oh, that would never do, would it? <laughs> you. <laughs> <laughs> What's his name? What do you mean? There's something going on here. The crab, try and be mature. A marriage should be about communication, no recrimination. A marriage should be based on trust, where two people decide that what... Here, here, here. Oh, 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 what are you doing? I'm checking your label. If you'd put the knackers back on inside you, there was going to be trouble, lady. <laughs> there is the MDLs. Ah, garbage. It's a monkey theory, and it's a monkey theory. Women never let go of one branch until they've got a hoddy another one. Now, what is his name? I am not telling you, and you are never going to beat it out of me. You watch oh! me, lady. I'll tell you. Oh, 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 it's Kendra. Kendra? What the hell kind of name is that? Is he a man or a telly to me? He's a gentleman. <laughs> A retired accountant. Oh, that's enough of that. You're giving me the book now. Oh, he has appreciated me a lot more than you ever have. Oh. 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 You hear that? You hear that? A retired accountant chucked for a corpse that does arithmetic. <laughs> See that bloody drop in cell? That's was my finest cell, Jamesy. That's was my... Archie Gemmo moment, you know. For once, for once, I did something with my life. Twice. Don't forget, at the Governalki Sports Day, we beat all comers at pushing highest up the Job Centre wall. <laughs> uh, so we did. <laughs> Mr Nesbitt! Oh, Christ, is that holy bastard. He puts me right off my swirly. I'm off ski. Oh, James, you don't leave me here. All right, Reverend. Uh, uh... Uh, Mr Nesbitt, I thought you'd like to know. I've been speaking to the local council about the community centre. Yeah. Well, they're saying that it'll cost around £10,000 to get it up and running again. 10 k mm. We've no got that kind of money. Dear God. The only people that are working in here are drug dealers and, and you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there you are. How about it, bro? What's your chances? I don't think so. Oh, come on. Listen up. Chucking your money away is a marvellous feeling. I mean, look at me. <laughs> I'm humped, but I'm happy. Yes, so I see. I'm sorry, but I have commitments. <laughs> I'm sure you do. But they're obviously not the people I govern, eh? 
Well, if you're not going to help, I will. Mr Nesbitt, I can see that you mean well, but I fear the monks of Buckfast Abbey have seen the best of you. Should you buy the now? You hear that there? You hear that? I mean, it doesn't matter how nice nature the man is, does it? The mere act of putting on a dog collar come and turns him into a, a condescending wank. <laughs> right, I'm talking car boot sale here. Right? MD got a motor? No. MD, no MD with a motor? No. MD and MD's family ever caressed or knowingly fondled a motor? No. I got hit with a motor once. <laughs> and uh, by some happy twist of fate, is the boot still lodged up your pumper and ready to be adapted as a useful sales emporium? No. Oh, well, that kind of rules that out as a possible source of group largesse, doesn't it? Eh? Yeah, glick it, wet brained article that you are. But why did the council have to shut our wee place down? I mean, what's 10k to aim? Rab. If you want to see a real fanny merchant clock this, Absolutely. that bam for the council. Uh, uh, it is a time of harsh austerity, and we are all suffering. That is why I've put together a select band of city councillors who will report to me once a month in the sauna suite of the Elysium Hotel in Mykonos. Last year, on our fact-finding mission to the discos of Grand Canaria, many people came... You see what we're up against? Aye, we're humped. We might as well just get blutered. Shut your arse! We are not getting blutered. Was Jesus blutered when he threw the money lenders out the temple? Hey. Well, fair enough, he probably was, but that's not a point. You see, when I see bams like that, I know what we've got to do. We've got to get medieval here. We've got to shame these bastards. We've got to use every trick in the book to make these bastards squirm. I could offer him sex. What? I'll have a bath first. <laughs> if Jesus was around the day, I know fine well what he'd have done. And the way I'm feeling... I might just do a bloody shame. What? Hey, what's going on? What are you up to in there? None of your business. Bugger off. Oh, what is all the noise about? I've got a woman in here. That was a napper banging off the heat book. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she. Yesterday you were wanting a divorce. No, no, you're worried. What's the matter? Can't you take fright once you had his car axe fixed? Get out of my bloody way. Good <laughs> almighty. No, quite. But you're on the right lines. Forget Jimmy Hill, Demon Hill, or Blueberry Hill. For me, there will only ever be the one hill. The governor, Vince, who you all just heard there on the alley croon so sweet, you'll greet her. We're still here with our local man, Rab. Rab, what first prompted you Like to... a council, that's who prompted me, boy. Like a bloody council. Bunch of bloody wanks. That's what I am. Bunch of wanks. I mean, don't get me wrong, I've nothing against f***ing, you know, I mean, see in the past, I could have f***ing her skull. But see these f***ers, see these f***ers, these f***ers are spit in the blood of lawyers. Commonwealth f***ing games, is it? Commonwealth f***ing games. They can't give us 10k, 10k for a f***ing drop-in centre. Oh, I've got bloody control. You see them, you see them sitting there with a f***ing our expense accounts and a f***ing Hugo Boss f***ing dinners. They give me the f***ing dry book. <laughs> Here's Michael Bubbly with <laughs> Sam for me. He's a f***ing f***ing on. Oh, get him, maybe. He'll only make you unhappy. Oh, he has pulled some serious stunts in the past, but crucifixion? 
I'm worried sick, Kendrew. I know. Me too. Now spread your thighs a bit more uh-huh. and lean forward over the potter. <laughs> Getting some serious body heat there, Kendrew. Oh, sorry, sorry. Right. Now, am I wiggling my hips enough? Oh, you can never wiggle your hips too much in my book. Right. Now, that's good. Just hold that pose there. That's, that's... <laughs> oh, you have a seriously good ass. <laughs> Did I say arse? I meant stance. What am I like? I'm beginning to wonder. Look, can we play the bloody shot or no? Oh, yes, of course, of course. <laughs> now then, give me a nice swivel. Uh-huh. And four. Oh, trust me. <laughs> <laughs> We're here to learn, Huggies. <laughs> That? Oh, that, that's just the way documentary I taped last night inside nature's giants. <laughs> what do you say to critics who argue that what you're doing is poverty porn, the exploitation of the poor as gratuitous entertainment? Well, I'm poor. So that must mean I'm exploiting myself, you know. Heartless bastard that I am. <laughs> and you, I can't speak for my manager. And who is your manager? Uh, that's me, sweetheart. <laughs> James Villeneuve Aaron Cotter. As Rab's closest disciple, I will be doing my utmost to make sure that this doesn't degenerate into some tawdry circus. Which is why. This hand-painted, dishwasher-friendly J.C. meets Rabsy mug is nothing but the best. Maybe an iconic gift for your boyfriend? I, uh, I, I don't have a boyfriend. Me neither. We've got so much in common. <laughs> Rab, when the time comes, don't think you'll have died in vain. I could get a pump out of this. <laughs> that makes it all worthwhile. Have you any idea how damaging this could be for the city's image? Oh, I'm hell of a sorry. I didn't mean to drag morals into public life, no. Don't you get all high and mighty with me, sitting there all culturally macho because you drink pints? Well, I may seem like another council now to you, but believe you me, I work out. Listen, you know what I'm after. Your closing were drop-in centres and we want them back. Are you mad? This city has to find 500 million for the Commonwealth Games. Think about it. 2,000 Africans pitching up at the height of the Glasgow summer. Have you got any idea what the heating bills will be like? What if I got 10k a pop to throw away on public health? Listen, I'll come clean here. I do not want to kill myself. Come on. Which 10k to the council? I will tell you what I told the press pack at our austerity summit in Marbella. <laughs> the Govan Drop-In Centre was an unfortunate victim of very necessary cuts in expenditure. We must all make sacrifices. Savvy? All right. All right. I'll bloody well do it then. I'll show you up for the scammy bastard you are. As a citizen, you can say what you want, but you can't do what you want. You attempt this blasphemy and I'll have you arrested. There. Swear on the sanctity of my council expenses claim form. <laughs> Your hat. Swear. All right. All right. I promise not to crucify myself. <sighs> Finally. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have a city to run. And a cummerbund to buy. Cheerio. <laughs> <laughs> hey. 
It's therapy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some people walk the line. Others snort it up their wee pink snouts. I'm not going to let this bastard beat me. You are cordially invited to a public burning. If you like the cluster at Alton Towers, you will love the burning of the male witch in Govan. Bring the family for a day of joy and laughter and a fat bastard getting his ass scorched. What the hell do you think you're doing? I'm advertising a show. It's not a show. It's a heroic action. Do you tell me? I've got majorettes booked and everything. I've taken the reins out of school for this. I even sent a tweet to that Simon Kibble. This could have been a glittering showcase for their multi-bastard and talents. You want to let them do the way you did us? I will not let you down. Yeah. Well done, Rab. Mary would be proud of you. Well, that's if she wasn't pumping on another guy. What's his name again? Kendrew. What? Kendrew! Mary, a surprise. <laughs> Kendrew, it's just, well... I've been having a wee think to myself about what happened the other day. Oh, have you? And, uh, I don't really want to talk about it out here in the steppe. Certainly not before the watershed. Oh, why not? There may be scenes of a sexual nature. Oh, next to me. Come in. Welcome to Ravavart in stunning Jamesy Vision. <laughs> right, well, I would just like to welcome the world's press here to govern the day. <laughs> and I would just like to say that I have no regrets in what I'm doing. I just, well, I just want to leave the world a better place than I found it. And, uh, I love you all. Jimsy of Orléans, are you ready? Rab of Restitution Street, say the word. Right, let's do it. I am. <laughs> Terry Towlin here, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> this is an unexpected pleasure. <laughs> I'm the govern. All pleasures are unexpected, including this one. <laughs> <laughs> that was just a hobby. <laughs> a lot of my ladies were most happy to oblige. They needed the extra pin money. You rotten bastard. You were grooming me. Oh, no, Mary. None of these other cleaners meant anything to me. It was nothing personal. Oh, really? Well, neither this then. <laughs> oh, 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 Kendra. Oh, oh, wait. Are you all right? Oh, Kendra, speak to me. Oh, no, no. I can see your knuckles. <laughs> Are you, you ready, Rob? I am ready. Jimsy, I'd like to say that you have been a great friend to me. Thanks, Paul. I'd like to see a back, can I? Because you've been a dirty, rancid Tora right down the line. Well, that's no split hairs, Rabbi. Jumble up the words. There's a compliment in there somewhere. Right, Jim. Let's do it. And whatever happens, don't stop. I don't want to lose my nerve. Oh, no, the other buddies. Hang on. Oh, 
You rob a vark. Oh, I just because I'm standing in a bonfire. Oh, I don't know. You set fire to your house a couple of times and they never let you forget it. Aye, Rab's a qualified arsonist. He's got to practice somewhere. Aye, that shoe's all over. Make note as if we're some kind of inbreeds just because we're forgiven. Very few of us are inbreeds here. Most of them are a wee up the bingo. <laughs> I want this circus broken up. No. On what grounds? We've every right to protest. On health and safety grounds, the public must be protected. I know your face. Are you a fat hobby city? I'm Simon Bird, your council leader. <laughs> At this moment, I should be working tirelessly for Glasgow by attending the stage premiere of Priscilla, Queen of the Desert. On my command, unleash hell. Priscilla's a bike! Give us back my doping center! OK, unleash hell. Release the scratch cards! Oh, no, 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 forget the scratch cards! The bastard's standing for us off! No hard feelings, Biffle, but Glasgow's a modern, thriving metropolis. We don't want throwbacks like you sullying its image. We can't have class martyrs on my watch. Hey, you. On your way, unless you want to end up in the back of that van getting a right good boot up your knickers. All right. All right, I'm going, I'm going. I realise I can't fight City Hall. I'll say this. You're the ugliest pole dancer I've ever seen. Here. Have a pint on me. Oh, thanks very much. I bow to your superior authority. <laughs> oh, hell of a story. I'll just go and get some help. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing like we spot a violent slapstick for making you feel even with life. <laughs> oh, a photo opportunity. <laughs> After scum and scum. You know, when Mr Nesbitt told me that he planned to raise funds to reopen the centre, I admit I had my doubts. But then I went home and I prayed. And you know... I like to think that God answered my prayers. He answered my prayers and all. And lo, two wise men did come from the East End. Uh, Mr Nesbitt, I understand your benefactors are very busy men who can't be with us today. Uh, but perhaps you'd like to tell us how this wonderful project came to touch their hearts. Surely, <coughs> of course. <coughs> Our uh, benefactors are actually two young thrusting businessmen who started out with nothing but, well, a spy hole and an Alsatian dug. And they actually heard me on the Alley Cruin show making a heartfelt plea for tolerance and human understanding. And not to put too fine a point on it, they were fucking moved. <laughs> an inspirational tale... Uh, uh, but, Mr Nesbitt, uh, what business is it that your colleagues are actually in? Oh, uh, the clues in the tale. Just draw the curtains. <clears throat> well, it uh, gives me great pleasure to declare this drop-in centre open. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's true what they say. There's a little bit of good in the worst of it. You skanky bastard! <laughs> and a little bit of bad in the best of us. <laughs> Mary, <laughs> pumped any geriatrics lately? Oh, no. <laughs> Look, you sell doing these shops and get a loaf, a pint of milk, and a pan of mince for the night's tea. I'm away to my work. <laughs> That's governed for I love you, by the way. <laughs> Business as usual? I think so. That being the case, beat it. More of life's vital questions are tackled. Just ask Rod Gilbert in 15 minutes over on BBC One.
she's much nicer than Mr Conway, isn't she? Uh, Mr Conway's a fud. We've even worse than he's a headmaster. As your new teacher, I want to get to know you. One way to do that is to ask about role models. Who has a good role model in their family? Yes, Peaches? My grandpa, miss. He talks the talk, but he can walk the walk. Miss, her grandpa's a nut job. My da says so. Your dad dumped your ma for a minger out of Zumba class. Your dad's a fanny. <laughs> Enough! It's very encouraging that your grandpa has turned his life around, Peaches. I'm worried about you and your drinking drop. What are you talking about? I'm teetotal. That's what I mean. You for govern and no taking a swally. I mean, it kind of goes against nature. Listen, boy. Being 50 and vertical is going against nature round here. <laughs> govern is the only place I know where you can win a new liver on a scratch card. There we go, chips. A pint for Andra. A pint for me. And, of course, the... John Knox cocktail for yourself, Rob. There's nothing the matter with playing tap water, boy. So don't you start a needle. That's the style, Rob. Threaten me with violence. What a great advert for a sober life. I love the sober life. I've never been happier. Hear me? H-E-P-P bastard and Y. Well, I must say it's good to see so many faces here today, both old and new. Oh, she can help, you know. People like, eh... Uh... Leanne. Oh, aye. Leanne, aye. And, of course, uh, Jinty here, who's been coming to alcohol counselling for, oh, how long? About 12 years, Jinty? Thirteen. Thirteen, is it? How old are you now, Jinty? Rab, please, my bastard lady. Oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no offence, you know. I'm sorry, T. I tell you the truth, I had a wee drink of wine there during the tea break. I know I shouldn't have, but surely even you must get tempted, eh, Rab? Would you? So, where is he? Oh, your grand will no be long, Pet, I'm sure. <laughs> it's my own stupid fault for opening my gub. No! Your grand will do a great talk to your class. He'll be a great role model. <laughs> Are you sure, Nana? People say you used to fall down drunk in the street. Oh, just in the street, hen. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Parks, ponds, out of windies. He was very versatile. <laughs> mm. I know, I know. A gruesome spectacle, isn't it? A bloody wildlife video, isn't it? <laughs> a dirty big grizzly bear in a string vest. And an opswam suit. It beasted into his own body weight and ice cream. Needs <laughs> must. When the devil drives. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. Leanne. <laughs> I didn't see you there. <laughs> I, uh, I haven't lived in my head for the past wee while, you know. I've been uh, heavily involved in the gluttony business. <laughs> Me too. Yeah. Very warm in the counselling room tonight, wasn't it? Nice, nice to cool off. Oh, yes, yes. Most refreshing. There we go. Creme de menthe flavour for you and Bailey's flavour for you. <laughs> We've been through the brandy and Cointreau flavours, not to mention the Irish whisky and rum and raisin. A wee bit of a theme developing there, eh? <laughs> God. Who am I trying to kid? I've been desperate for a drink for months now. I don't think I can hold it for much longer. Me neither. Every day without a drink's a nightmare. She drink is better than having sex, isn't it? Well, better than sex with me, obviously. <laughs> the touch, the taste, the shudder. <laughs> Maybe we could just have the... Maybe we could just have the... No, I can't see it. Go on, say it. I can't. All right, then, I'll say it. Just the one. I 
I'm leaning on the lamp of the corner of the seat. <laughs> <laughs> <That's terrible. laughs> <laughs> oh, come to go. Sorry, could I ask you to keep an oyster down a wee bit, please? I tell him, the boy, the boy, the boy, the boy. So tell me, Rab, have you always been morbidly obese? Oh, no, 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 no. I've, I've actually been quite happily obese. <laughs> you know, but his granddaughter actually take, take, takes after me in that respect. Really? What's her name? Her name, her name is Peaches. Peaches Nisbet. Oh, my God. Angelic face, potty mouth. That's the very one. The very one. <laughs> Why did you ask? I'm a teacher. Oh. oh my God! What have I done? I'm ruined. I'm finished. I may have to kill myself. I yeah, you may, you may. But... Oh come on, let's have another drink. Oh, I need to think of my career. This episode has been a tragic error of judgment. Make that two tragic errors of judgment. Hallelujah! <laughs> what are you looking at? <laughs> I do. I do have seen the error of my ways. Uh-huh. I'll bug it out and piss it anyway, you know. <laughs> Cheers! <laughs> the doctor tell you about drink? No, to drink it. And what have you gone and done? Drank it. Come on, mate. It was just, it was just a wee bit of ice cream so that I could get a jag for the bottom of the tub, no? The tub? There's hundreds of them. Mary. Oh, this is it, eh? This is it. Back to the bad old days. Ah, oh, come on, Mary. It's not like the bad old days. I mean, I have matured. I mean, the door's still on its hinges, you know. And tonight of all nights, eh? When you knew that we Peaches was waiting to talk to you about you being a role model. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Oh, God knows what that teacher's going to make, eh? Oh, here, Mr Teetotal Grandpa out getting blittered to the nights. I, I wouldn't actually worry too much about her teacher. <laughs> well, she was out getting blittered with me. She's an architect. In the name of God. I know. It's a delightful coincidence. <laughs> She's actually part of my counselling group. Well, I thought I'd heard it all around here. When the early learning centre opened, I needed an exchange section, but this... I think we might be having a hotel piece, you know. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. What were you doing out with that woman? You're not at the Creeping Games again, are you? Oh, come on, Mary, Mary, Mary. You're the only woman for me. Oh. You know that. Come on, I'll prove it to you. Oh. Come on. Who's your cat off? I know I'm a wee gamer. See the sour fat bastard. Ladle! Oh. Get off me. You can just make Jamie a cup of tea. <laughs> I lay myself down, Jamesy. I went in and I got blue Well, of course you got blue You're an alky. It's a job description. I can't go back in the swell again. If I do that, I'll lose my liver. Ah, a flesh wound. There's always the intravenous drip. <laughs> I'll lose my wife and maybe my grandwain. Well, that's woman for they're always trying to drag us up to their level. Oh, good. It's gone. That means yellow's blue tip for my birthday. What is it? <clears throat> Take it from here, Ab. We're getting older. Deny yourself nothing. Honest to God, it's ages since we've all been out together, isn't it? Oh, geez, a break. I took you to your ma's funeral last year. <laughs> all of us, Jamesy. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> Here, Rab, you don't mind us having a drink, do you? It's not going to make you all tense or none, is it? Look at that, yeah. <laughs> 
No, don't start. I knew he'd have a go at me. And it's my birthday as well. What do you expect? He turns up with a dead crow on his napper and I'm not supposed to mention it. You've done nothing but mention it all night. Fab, what did I tell you before we left the house tonight, eh? Right, you are in your last warning. All right, all right. Just admit one thing. You died it, didn't you? I did not die it. I swear to God, may my mother rot in hell if what I... What colour? Midnight Raven. There, you satisfied. Midnight Bastard Raven. He's spoiling my birthday. I said he'd do and he's doing it. It's male grooming, Rab. There's nothing the matter with that. Male grooming? I snag you every morning for a loaf, a pint of milk and a sunflower facial scrub. What I do not do is stick my napper in a bucket of Matt Emulsion and come up with a heed looking like some new to change in the bloody guard. Back off. It was a birthday present and I bought it for him. Oh, that was a good call. That'll be a pound well spent. It was double that, if you must know. <laughs> if you include the ponytail. <laughs> is everybody OK for refreshments? Oh, yes. I'd like another large jelly trifle, please. With sherry and a paper umbrella and hundreds and thousands. You had jelly for your main course and jelly for your pudding. You're not getting any more jelly. I want jelly. It's my birthday, right? Please jelly you. Shut <laughs> up. Here, have some bloody <laughs> jelly. <laughs> Down in your arse, will you? This is supposed to be a friend's night out. Don't you spoil it. Shut up for you. Please, I'll wear my life like a hair ship. It's beginning to drive me bloody mad. Look, don't you take this out of me because you can't get a drink. That's why I tried to give up a drink to please you. But what's the bloody point? Oh, well, you just sit there and pick the lice out of your armpits, eh? <coughs> I'll be in the lobby with Ella. You coming? You're on. What are you looking at? Oh, calm down. You want God, I want jelly. It's the same thing, only with different names. When did my life turn into a jail sentence, Timothy? The minute you gave up a swally. That's when the long fuse that led to this moment was first lit. God, I miss it. God, I miss it. I loved your night shooting around, Dan. What do you mean that? You're right, Jamesy. The clock of life is ticking fast. And you've got to grab pleasure. You've got to grab it with both hands. Ah, sweetheart. <laughs> you don't know how long I've waited for you to say those words. I know that, I know. I know. That's it. Just a bill, just a bill. When I walk in that pub, my, my whole life's going to change, Jimsy. I'm going to be playing Russian roulette with my liver again. Wait a minute. What the hell's happened? Where are they? Come to Mary. There might be an innocent explanation. Your husband says something about going out on the Randan to get Lalde? Innocent, <laughs> my ass. I cannot let you walk into that pub. What do you mean? What do you mean? Hold me up. Mm. Oh, God. Oh, it's so long since we've held each other up this way. Oh. <laughs> do you think I'm going to throw away this moment of exquisite rapture by pumping you back into a wet brain unit? What are you talking about? I told him we was going to get in the hand on. In this high-tech age... The Randan takes many forms. It's like a sea trap. Deny yourself nothing. So, where is he this time? Well, uh, he had uh, he, he had to dash away. Oh, he had an urgent appointment. Where? But, uh, he, he, well, he, he's very big in the, the, the jelly fight industry. I'm sure it was something to do with that. The school talks the Mora. He's supposed to be her role model. My mummy's right. Grandpa promised me. 
I know, I know, Hen. I'm really sorry. <laughs> well, that's that, isn't it? Goodbye, childhood. Hello, self harm. And I was going to put that off until she fell pregnant, eh? I'm only 11. Have you never heard of forward planning? <laughs> Remember this, boys? The theme from Sutherland's Law. Aye, very nice. I must say, this isn't what I imagined. Are you sure this is a crack then? Well, it's a crack then, all right. No danger. But for the over 50s, it's just that when you get to our age, you want a wee bit of comfort with your crack, don't you? <laughs> what you're actually saying is this is a crack then for the Saga generation. That's well put, Rab. You can play dominoes, scrabble, or have a nice wee go at the crossword while you wait to chase the dragon. Is that no a bit... shite? It's just a wee dod of our cultured baby boom lifestyle. Tell them, Breen. The great thing is, unlike other crack dens, there's none of that bloody figgy scent or diddy rascal nonsense here. There's the lovely wee background of the Scottish Philharmonic to aid chillosity. <laughs> mm. Have you got mental health issues? Oops. Doddy, these are turned out lovely if I do say so much. Pastries rare and buttery. Mmm. Andra. In the name! Where the hell are you dressed like that for? All right, I admit it. I've got a secret life. By night, I walk the twilight world of Govan. At least I do on Tuesdays when Babette's at the bingo. Do you want a sausage roll? Where did you get them? The Atlantis branch of Greg's? I rip the piss. But we'll see how big yous are once you've tried the games room. The ga- Where the hell's the games room? <laughs> Tralla! What the hell is that? What do you think? Let's rock! He's <laughs> <laughs> turned his phone off. What's he doing? How can I break this to you gently? Wait. I can't. Rearrange these words into a well-known Fraser saying. Pish on Grandpa lying his in. Grandpa's lying in his own pish? Yeah. <laughs> See? Learning can be fun, can't it? <laughs> right, one last try. Message. Message one. Where the hell are you? You get your bloody act together and get your ass back up to this house. Rab. Jimsy? Rab? Jimsy! Where are you, Jimsy? I'm in here. In, in, the, in where? In the games room. What do you think? Thinking. <sighs> In the name. <laughs> ah, I found these clothes in the water. Nobody keeps them there as a sacred shrine to the memory of his wife. Naturally, I went through the handbags looking for spare change. Yeah? <coughs> and that's when the drugs started doing strange things to me. I put these on, and I thought of you. <laughs> no, 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 no. You, you can cut that malarkey out right now. No, no. Although, I must say, that is a very nice perfume you're wearing. <laughs> what is it? Airwick, peach and jasmine. I let one go early on, but that was in another life. I'm different now. Oh. And then, um, that's actually 
a nice dress you're wearing. I'm glad you like her. Do you know the nicest thing about it? It comes off. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. No, 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 no. No, no. Oh. Uh. <laughs> I'll try and understand. Alcoholism is an illness. Aye. An illness that afflicts useless, lazy bastards. Funny how it always seems to find them, isn't it? Don't worry, Nana. It's not your fault. Thanks, Pete. All the same, you're two rungs down on the love ladder now and it'll be a long climb back up again. <laughs> right, come on, you. Hey. You awake? Hey. See if I was to say, how was it for you? How would you answer? I'd say I hope it was non existent for me. <laughs> me too. What did we do? I don't know, Jamie, I don't know. How are you feeling? Jamie. Itching her. <laughs> Tenderness her in. No, no I'm, I'm fine. Well, that's a relief. <laughs> oh, I've probably just been paranoid, because let's face it, who are that out of skulls and crack? I mean, we're only fit today, you know? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Right enough. Uh, well, hey. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> Why? Can I have my knickers back? <laughs> Certainly. So, uh, how, how do you think the game will go in the night? Oh, three point cushion at a tap, you know, I'd, I'd settle for a draw right now, yeah? I think you're right. <sighs> Jamesy? What? That's never happened, right? Right, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, I didn't even get rid of my funeral. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Come on, Mary. It's not like the bad old days. I mean, I have matured. Sort it. See? I knew your grandpa wouldn't turn up. My dad is a mentalist. Your dad's a rent boy. My dad would spank his wee pink ass for him. <laughs> oh. <laughs> grandpa? Oh. <laughs> yeah. I'm here for the role model talk. I'm sorry, Rob, but there's been a change of plan. Oh, hey, hey, what do you mean? I'm Gordon Conway, the headmaster. And you are? Eh, hey, Rob Nesbitt, a statistic and role model. Go on yourself, Grandpa. I need mean, you both, sweetheart. <laughs> Wayne's. Eh? Exactly. And Wayne's have to be protected, Mr Nesbitt. Eh, hey, what, what do you mean? He means me. I misled the school over my disclosure certificate. I didn't own up that I had, you know, issues. Ah, oh, you mean the fact that you're a pisshead? Quite. Ah, <laughs> don't worry about that. Half the teachers in my school were pisheads, honestly. You'd open a cupboard door and a whang of polymunch would hit you like a right hook to the tonsils. <laughs> Times have changed, thankfully. And I can't stand by while a teacher of mine not only conceals her own addictions, but invites a practising alcoholic to dish out pints of his so-called wisdom to innocent children. They need to be protected. Protected? Protected for what? I mean, do you think I'm here to say, hi, kids, I am a bum scuffer. Hey, I've ruined my life. I've got four brain cells and, and mould growing down the front of my trousers. I'm here as a cautionary tale. 
I'm sorry, but my mind is made up. Ah, your mind was made up when you slurped out a womb, you hideous hush puppy geek that you are. What subject do you do? Geography. Listen, kids, here's the deal. <coughs> Let's put this to the board, right? What would you rather have? A wee pep talk for a skanky ball bag like me? <laughs> or geography? Pep talk from a skanky ball bag! Why, <laughs> yes. Nisbet, I'm asking you to leave or I'll call the police. Miss Carruth, collect your things. Wait a minute. Is she giving you your jotters? Afraid so. Well, it's your call, but if it was me, I'd want to mark the occasion, you know. I only want my time in government to count for nothing. You know what I'm saying? You may well have a point. Mr Conway? Yes. Oh! <laughs> Switch them off. Well, I must say, that was a bloody good effort. <laughs> Here, have a wee Glasgow kiss. <laughs> oh, Mary. What's in the suitcase? Our marriage. Oh, Mary. Don't be like that. I've changed my ways. Look, wait, see. I brought you a present. <laughs> What the hell is that? Oh, super! You've got the free gift. Excuse me, are you Mrs Nesbitt? Yes. I just want to say, you're a very lucky woman. <laughs> I hope you're listening to that. She actually said... I heard what she said. Right, you. Get your arse up that road. This is going to cost me. Relax, relax. It's ice cream. <laughs> Raspberry ripple, if you must know. <laughs> rap! Oh, rap! Uh, yes, my little angel delight. There's always a price to pay for keeping the peace, you know. What the hell are you doing? Leave some of that. You're supposed to be licking that half of me. No part of it doing your larynx. Now, come on, get funky. I've got my bloody work in the morning. Hey, yeah. Uh, you heard. You want to stick around for the money shot? Hmm? Uh, I don't blame you. In that case... to those burning questions that keep you awake at night. Ask Rod Gilbert over on BBC One in 15 minutes. Peter! Makes you wonder. Just saying. Makes you wonder, didn't it, Rab? No. I wonder if war will ever end. You see, wonder, Mary, it can be a silent thing. War will only end when people change, when people learn to live and let live, when violence is the last option we use and not the first, when people of all creeds and colours embrace the concept of universal brotherhood. Where the hell is Mark Chapman when you need him? <laughs> if you don't want me weekending in your house, just say so. I don't want you weekending in my house. Right. Right, sit down, son. Gash is going nowhere. God willing, this could all be part of his rehabilitation. What, sitting there, like a big Jesse, knitting raffia socks? And weaving placemats. What do you know about socks? You only change yours once a year. Twice, if I'm looking for my night king. Hey, man. <laughs> Don't put pictures in his head. He's got problems enough as is. 
I'll get it. Oh, you just sit there in your arse. Hey, you are grounded. Grounded? What are you talking about? I'm nearly 60 years old, for God's sake. Well, that saggy old arse of yours will have less to travel, won't it? Sit. <laughs> Mary doll, is Rab coming out to play? <laughs> Some bloody cheek. Mary doll, oh, three times you have coaxed him out in the rant and this week. Get it into your head, the man is an alcoholic. And an exceedingly fine one. <laughs> oh, you must be so proud to have such a talented hobby. Now, where is the maestro? The maestro's crouching the floor with his ear at the door. <laughs> you are going nowhere and you can bugger off. But, but we're not going drinking. It's just a game of football. Oh, is that a fact? So what's with the bottle of mountain juice in each pocket, then? <laughs> Goalposts. <laughs> Speak to him. Tell him it's for your own good. Mary's right, James. You know, see this woman? This woman has been the wind beneath my wings. This woman has stood by me. Stop. Too much shite and onions. Half a ladle. Jimsy. It's over, Jimsy. I must ask you to leave and never return. I'm proud of you, Rab. I know that must have been hard for you. Oh, well, I had to be, Mary. I had to be. Anyway, there's a new preacher coming to the church. And, well, I want to give him... I want to give him my fullest support by being sober and upright. Well, a fine ambassador for Govan. Relax. Just me a shite and onion, you know? <laughs> yes, Dan. I'm really looking forward to meeting my new congregation. No, Dan, I will not be a soft touch like last time. Yes, the ninja death hold you showed me works really well. No, I skipped the samurai sword. Well, because they're parishioners, Dan. They're not an attacking whore from Kill Bill. No, 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 no one's turned up yet. Oh, just a couple of feral derelicts. I'm hoping don't turn out to be the head elder and the treasurer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. They're speaking at me. I can never understand those accents. <sighs> I'll talk later. I'm saying you are right, Hen. It's not a call, you. I'm the Reverend Lillian Biddeff. I come in peace. <laughs> but I'm prepared for war. What's the Hamden? I only open my gaggy to say hello. I come here huh, to serve the community. That's very nice of you. But gonna do us a favour. Gonna not give us immortal life. Aye, we are for govern. Who the hell wants to live forever round here? <laughs> <laughs> Fear not, Reverend. We're not all Sonny Bean. Sonny Bean? Is that local code for something? No matter. My name's Ken Eves, and this is my wife, Rona. I'm an insurance, by the way, and so is Rona. Our son Rory is a rebel. He wants to be an accountant. <laughs> Charters. I hope you're not going to be one of these floppy haired revisionists like the last clown we had here. He didn't last long. Good. Well, that's me a way to be upright and decent, Mary Hen. Aye, you do that. And make sure you come back here vertical. No more of the creeping games, do you hear? Ah, oh, goodness me. Ye of little faith. <laughs> Cheerio by the new. <laughs> Did you know I've left a decent interval for guilt? <laughs> all right, all right, all right. I'm over it. <laughs> Life goes on. You'll find me, at heart... A traditionalist. My values are hard work, discipline, and the family. Yes. 
Of course, the coalition. And now the church. The toffs are back. <laughs> Praise God with hymn number. Um... Oh! Oh! How are the old fellow holy vessels? And you are? I'm sorry I'm late, but I was. I was delayed, you know. I was delayed on a refreshment business, followed by a small roughage incident, which may yet be detectable. <laughs> I is. I, I fear it is. <laughs> Reverend Biddulph, meet Mr. Nesbitt from Govan. I suspect Mr. Nesbitt may have been drinking. Drinking? He's pissed to the gunnels. My gunnels may be pissed, but I have not lost my subtle eye for detail. And you, madam, are a woman. I am Reverend Biddulph. And you, sir, are in a terrible state. Yes, yes, you are, you are, you are quite correct. But all is not as it seems. Alas, I suffer from migraine headache. (coughs) (coughs) Vomiting migraine headache, which incapacitate me and render me... Wrong! (laughs) What are we doing in that church? These joints give me the heebie-jeebies. May I introduce Bishop Cotter? <laughs> yes, yes. Bishop Cotter is at present on a brass rubbing tour. <laughs> is there any brasses you'd like to rub in here, Bishop? No. These brasses have all been rubbed to buggery. <laughs> Mind you, there's a few that are rubbed in here 20 years ago, eh? Say thee! <laughs> Did I leave my shoes under your bed that night? <laughs> oh, you, uh, I fear we must away, Bishop. Otherwise, you're going to get a right good gubbin. Yes. Uh, my altar boys will be fighting on the floor. I'll go back and pull them off. <laughs> then, then I'll stop them fighting on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> oh, how we laughed at such ribald church humour. <laughs> Get out now, please. Uh, Both of you. All right. All right. We'll go. Do you, think, do you think two respected men of the cloth would stay a moment longer in a place where they're not wanted? We wouldn't demean ourselves. <laughs> but first, a song! <laughs> song! Just go! Yes, just go. Well, friends, colleagues, and fellow holy bastards, <laughs> here ended today's lesson. <laughs> Where's your popes, Mr. Dewey? <laughs> <laughs> and drunk and midnight, you yeah. You promised me that you wouldn't drink. Uh, Mary, sweetheart, I, I appear to be incapacitated. <laughs> have, you, have you inadvertently tied me to the chair with Raphael? Oh, have I? Oh, so I have. Oh. What are you looking at your feet for? Well, I was just checking to see if I had clean socks. I thought it was maybe my birthday. <laughs> Long end of the stick there, pal. You're no so much tied to that chair as stuck there where I can see you. You were a Stephen King fan, big boss. Remember Misery? Well, she's just cut the soaks off you. Oh, I get it, I get it. This is all you're doing, isn't it? Don't listen to him, Mary, don't listen to him. He's a loony. He eats Play-Doh. Well, if you saw what passes for cooking in the remedial ward, you'd eat Play-Doh, too. 
Gash has had behavioural problems right for the off. All because of you. Oh, come on, Mary. Come on. Come on. It's me. It's Bobby. Your big bipolar bear. <laughs> He's the one over there. He's the one you've got to watch. He's the one that's causing the problems here. I mean, he, he sits in covers with his thumbs of his ass, singing Noah and the Whale song. See him and I, him and I, his chalk and cheese. Honestly, I mean, I actually often wonder if he's... Don't you dare. Don't you dare say it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we touch psychotic yourself, Mary. <laughs> we have so much in common. No, oh, you are pushed me too far this time, Rabnus, but the question is this. What do I run through first? You or the oldies steak pie sitting in the kitchen for the night's dinner? Cos see right now, I am easy. Take the stab and uh, I'll show you back up. I'm a dab hand with a running stitch. Uh, pink thread or mauve? <laughs> well... <laughs> well, well, what do you want me to do? I'm, uh, I'm actually here to apologise and be smart not my act, you know. <laughs> it's, uh, it's actually the wife's idea. <gasps> I see. And is that the reason you're apologising? Because your wife told you to? Oh, come on. <laughs> Don't make this any more difficult than it has to be. <laughs> I wouldn't be here if I didn't think she was right, would I? Think? Wit? Oh, it's just the way I talk. I can't help it, right? It's not what you say, Mr Nesbitt. It's the way you say it. It's all those yapping vowels and growling consonants. Listen, why don't you pull the crucifix out your archibald? <laughs> I might be manky on the outside, but some of these hoity-toity buggers you get in here, I mean, they're manky on the inside, you know what I'm saying? Mm. Well, it's a pity you didn't think of that last Sunday. Well, I was uh, indisposed last Sunday. <laughs> no, Mr Nesbitt, you were totally bluted. Am I wasting my time here? I mean, are you going to accept my apology, or are you no? If you promise to give up drinking, I'll accept you back into my congregation. I'm putting you on your honour, Mr Nesbitt. No bevying. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Nothing. In the name of... <laughs> Placemats, missies. <laughs> Can I maybe interest you in a wee sale? Oh, I see. I, I know a bit of sign. Do you sign? Pity. Nothing at all, not even a wee bit. Oh, excellent. Try me. <laughs> all right then, missus. Now just remember, you say it best when you say nothing at all. <laughs> I will. And you can watch me. Look at Gash. Shared a joke with the customers. This could be a turning point, Rab. Rab! I, 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 I heard you, I heard you. Turning point, turning point. I'm over the moon, over the moon. Will you quit <laughs> thinking about drink for a minute and concentrate? Harry, surely, Mary, surely. Yeah. What about this one? Oh, that's lovely. Oh, Rearing summary. <laughs> or this one? Oh, that's lovely, too. Rearing summary. Or this one? Oh, that's really lovely. Rare and summery, that you. It's a shelf, Rob. <laughs> Will you try and keep up? But wait and try this on, right? Keep your mind off the drink. My colour, eh? Bottle green. <laughs> <laughs> What's the matter? Eh, uh, somebody in. Go oh, wait there till they're finished. All oh, right, right. God almighty. Oh, roll on Sunday. 
Last week, my tenure got off to an unfortunate start. Because of Mr Nesbitt. I, I, I'm pure mortified. I'm hell of a sorry in that, you know. Our family brings these white lilies, Reverend, the gift of purity. Hey, you sicky bum bastard that you are. Coming soon for you, the gift of soap. <laughs> you pee on one trouser leg, one lousy trouser leg. Two! Two lousy trouser legs, and they never let you forget. Thankfully, Mr Nesbitt has now apologised, and I have accepted his apology. <sighs> Thanks very much, Jen. It's off a buggy. Don't grovel yet. She hasn't finished. Eh? Accepted. With strings. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Experience has taught me that a pastor must be strong. You tell him, Reverend. Hallelujah. Seek hail. <laughs> <laughs> now, Mr. and Mrs. Eves have informed me of a fine old Scottish tradition. I bet you it's no buying around because they're as tight as a nun. And speaking of the name and shame tactic of its day, the cutty stool. Yes. <laughs> Mr. Nesbitt, as a punishment, you will sit on the cutty stool for three weeks. Eh? Hey, I'd give him six weeks for that sneer on his skimmy face alone. And three more for that strong vest, and another three for being on benefits. <laughs> Not at all, son. Spot on. You, you expect me to, to part my arse on this totty wee stool and humiliate myself? Exactly. You will sit there till your erse is lumping. <laughs> Bravo! <laughs> and your glaiket face is in a muckle fankle. Oh, showboating now. <laughs> all right. All right, I'll do it. But first... I would no do. speeches, please. We haven't time. We have a full service to get through. A full service? You're needing, lady. Yes, of course, that man. Let us open our hymnals and praise God with... Ah! <laughs> oh, no, let's know. What now? Listen, if you, if you accept a man's apology, you shouldn't make him grovel. No, don't tell us. Is it against your human rights? <laughs> Listen, boy, even a scumball has his human dignity. Finished? No, I haven't, because apart from any nails, this stool is going to do my blowhole in it. There's a nail in it there that you could hang Jesus in a crumby coffee. <laughs> Listen, you don't want me here? Uh. Fair enough. I've, I've still got a good ten years of praying left in me. I will go elsewhere. Uh, ignore him, Reverend. No one else would have him. He's been banned from every church in the neighbourhood. You fall asleep. You fall asleep in one lousy coffin. It was a funeral service. You were using the corpse as a mattress. He was <laughs> dead. His celestial ass was half road to paradise. And as of this moment, so is mine. <laughs> Mr. Nesbitt! Ooh, I feel another apology coming on. Same time next week. Bugger off. <laughs> You're out of church early. God playing golf. Don't you start, boy, or you'll get a boot in the melt. Speak to Jesus, Rab. Get him to slip you a volume. Yeah. You get a hell of a lippy since he took that bolt out your neck. Oh, are you joining us, Rab, or are you meeting Martin Luther in the pub for a Britvic? <laughs> you know you want to. What's that, Rab? Is it maybe it's just the wine? <laughs> My pleasure. <sighs> I know, I know what you're thinking. Oh, poor, poor Robert. He's got a little one. Another one is vomity migraine attacks, you know. <laughs> but such is the devious mind of the alcoholic, I will hoodwink my good lady wife into thinking me sober <laughs> with this. <laughs> mm. 
<laughs> I must crave your patience while I locate my gub. Hi. Hi. Can I help you with that? Ah, uh, yes, please. Hey, you see, the deception is complete. <laughs> Oh God, God! Oh God, help me, help me! I am the angel of the baby. Stick with the drink, and you'll be all right. All right. Oh, that bad angel! How may I know? I wonder what the good angel's gonna say. No, look, Rab, you got two bad angels. <laughs> Stick in the bed, you'll be all right. <laughs> oh, God. I'm worse off than I thought. What are you doing here? What are you doing here? That's rather a good question. You can't be leaving already. You haven't finished unpacking. Oh, look, no hard feelings. I knew it was a mistake moving to this parish. Dan told me all along I wouldn't be accepted here. What's this? Fan mail. Fan mail? All oh, right. Dear Weybridge Witch. Factually incorrect. I'm from Faversham. Speaking as a Christian, I find your presence in the pulpit offensive. I would be grateful if you would stick your dirty bun... You get the drift. It's from our old friend Anonymous, like all the others. You don't want to let this bother you. <laughs> you see, well, for some people around here, having a, a minister that's English and a woman that's... So can a double whammy, you know? That wasn't the problem. It was the triple whammy that clinched it. Right, I filled in the sewage trench and I welded the gate. And I'll uh, rebuild that wall that I demolished in there. Oh. oh, this is Dan. Danielle, my civil partner. Bit of a lesbo cliche today. Working clothes. Oh, uh, well, you look fine to me. And if it helps put you at your ease, I would pump you. <laughs> Very chivalrous. Well, it's more than my parishioners have been. I'm preaching my last sermon this Sunday. Feel free to come along. Oh, I will, I will. Uh, are you coming in or are you demolishing a chimney with Fred Dibner? Ah, <laughs> <coughs> <laughs> uh, well, the cherry by the new. In conclusion... My partner, Dan and I, have enjoyed our brief, if turbulent, stay. Wankers. <laughs> but it is to the future we must all look as we walk uh, through uh, life. Just, just a wee minute, wee minute there. Uh, before we talk about the future, let's take a wee swatch at the present. I looked up the Oxford Dictionary's definition of a Christian. It said... Someone showing the qualities associated with Christ's teaching. Here's the church's version. Small-minded bastard that sends anonymous poison pen letters. Are you casting aspersions in my family? All I'm saying is this. If religion is about in the talk, it's about tolerance, is it no? And if the reverend there and the hairy ass scissor sister want a nightly kiwi and a pink rubber walloper, what's it to you? It's black, actually. Oh, sorry, man. I didn't mean to be walloper as well, you know. Thanks for your support, Mr Nesbitt. If I could just add on... <laughs> Haven't I quite finished? <laughs> she when I took up religion. I thought that meant the church. Well, I tell you, I was wrong. She, me, God. God is an immense, terrifying inexplicable 
exhilarating thing. But to you lot, what is he? He's the chairman of the bloody golf club. And you're all creeping about in case he cancels your membership. And it's because of that I have seen the light. And that is why I am giving up the bastard. <laughs> and uh, if you get a whiff of something a wee bit hardcore there, I apologise. But don't worry about it. It's just, it's just the wind of change rippling through the pews. Let us sing and uh, oh, praise God with um. Hymn number 374. Now, you remember, this is Gash's big day, right? You stay on message or it's straight back to the egg box for you. Aye, I hear you, I hear you. Well, da, that's it official. The show's taking me on as a full-time assistant. <laughs> you happy for me? Happy? <laughs> you got a dictionary? <laughs> Nothing I do ever pleases you. Everything's got to be a battle with you. Is that why you don't like me? Because I'll no fight with you. Listen, if that's the way you feel about it, you're welcome to try more. Any time you're ready. Sounds good to me. No time like the present. <laughs> what do you think of this one? Oh, it, it's rare and... summery. <laughs> John Sargent meets Rab C. Nesbitt later tonight at 11.20, followed by a classic episode from the first ever series at five past midnight. And we can't wait for tomorrow night. Catch a preview from the first episode of Life's Too Short online now. And don't miss it tomorrow night at 9.30 here on BBC Two.